It is the first of three championship Saturdays at War Memorial Stadium. First up, the 7A state title game between Bryant and North Little Rock. Hello, everybody. I'm Wes Moore alongside Bobby Swafford. These two teams are very familiar with each other. The third straight year, North Little Rock and Bryant has met in the state championship game, the sixth time they've played in the last three years. Bobby, we have our eyes on the two quarterbacks tonight. Yeah, and these two teams know all about those quarterbacks because, as you mentioned, sixth time they faced one another in 36 months. That's unheard of in football. That's something you do in baseball or basketball, but not on this sport. But the two quarterbacks, Austin Ledbetter for Bryant and Kareem Cotton for North Little Rock, are two the best at this level and that's why their teams are here you look at some of the numbers these two quarterbacks have put up so far this season and it is very impressive Austin Ledbetter has passed for 2,900 yards how about that touchdown to interception ratio yeah, anytime you're talking 42 touchdowns compared to just five interceptions that's going to get the, the coaches wanting to, you to play college football but he's going to play baseball for the hogs and we can see the comparison there those 2,926 yards majority of that in the first half because Bryant's blown out essentially everybody they've played, including North Little Rock in the regular season. So he's only playing about a half of football compared to Kareem Cotton, who does it both with his arms and his legs. Ledbetter's a better baseball player than a football player. I cannot wait to watch him pitch at Baumwalker Stadium. Now, Kareem Cotton may not have the same numbers passing mm -hmm. as Ledbetter. You take a look at the touchdowns for him. He gets it done with his arm and with his feet. You're talking 36 total touchdowns for the North Little Rock quarterback. 18 on the ground, 18 team through the air and the one element of the North Little Rock offense they didn't have last year is throwing the football. Cotton's turned himself into a lot better pocket passer, a little different look in the offense. J.R. Eldridge has brought a new look compared to Coach Mitchell, what he had last year. So North Little Rock a little more balanced than they have been in the past. They're going to have to be flawless today. And Cotton was clutch last week against Cabot. Coming down the stretch, tie game, scores a touchdown with his feet with about 17 seconds left in the game to get them the trip here at War Memorial Stadium. When we come back, we'll introduce you to the third member of our team we'll get you set for kickoff you're watching the 7a state championship game brought to you by arkansas pbs sports hey everyone i'm henry lewis gates jr it's an understatement to say that we're living through an unprecedented moment in human history sometimes to understand our present better it's helpful to look to the past as our guide and that's one of the many things that I love about public television. Wow, you found my family, dude. PBS is a place where you can learn about the people and the events that most fundamentally shaped our identity, including the resilience and the compassion that we see shining through today. PBS keeps us together, and PBS keeps us connected. Thanks to your support, PBS will always be there for you and for your community. Stay safe and take care. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. Four minutes away from kickoff of the 7A state championship game. North Little Rock is ready to run out onto the field. I see the Hornets coming out of their corner, coming out of the locker room. Let's go down to the field. Introduce the third member of our team, Hayden Balgavy. You can do it! It's a beautiful day. I know what he's saying. This is picture perfect weather. You couldn't ask for better weather for the 7 8 state yeah. championship game in, in December. Awesome. It, it's absolutely perfect. And uh, to stick with that weather analogy, I think that's going to be how these two teams come out. If you're Bryant, you've got a 
be the storm. You're, you've been the best team in the state of Arkansas as North Little Rock takes the field. You've been the best team all season long. Come out and look like it. But if you're North Little Rock, you've got to weather that storm. You know Brian's going to hit you with a punch early, but can you respond? You, can you come back and land a few haymakers yourself and give your chance a, uh, yourself a chance in the second half? I want to see what the North Little Rock defense can do against this Brian yeah. offense. First matchup earlier this year, they gave up almost 1,000 yards of total offense. Bryant was able to throw the ball. Bryant was able to run the ball. Last week, as you see the Bryant Hornets come onto the field, Cabot gave North Little Rock a lot of problems throwing the football. We know Bryant could throw the football, too, with the Austin Ledbetter, Hayden Schrader, one-two punch. We haven't spoken much about Hayden Schrader. This guy's a player. He doesn't have any Division I offers or FCS or FBS offers. He has a couple of Division II offers, but Hayden Schrader is a heck of a wide receiver. Yeah, if you haven't watched either one of these teams play this season, just find number 84. We're in all blue today because he's going to be the focal point of that passing game. As Wes, you just mentioned, 68 catches, 1,400 yards, and 20 touchdowns. So he's going to be the catalyst. Uh, the passing game, they like to get him going early, get him some short routes, underneath routes, and of course they're going to hit you with the play fake and try to get him behind the defense, but he's the straw that stirs the drink of this passing game along with his quarterback, Austin Ledbetter. You know, Cream Cotton's a lot of fun to watch, but I got to tell you, over the year and the, through that, throughout this season, it's been a privilege to watch Frederick O'Donnell run the ball for North Little Rock. This guy has a stiff arm that reminds me of an old number five that we watched in high school and for the Arkansas Razorbacks. You'll get to see it today. But Frederick O'Donnell can run the ball. He's physical. He was a tight end, converted to running back. And he is not afraid to, to stick it up in there and then throw his hand in there and push it to the ground. Yeah, 819 yards leads the charging Wildcats uh, on the ground. Ten touchdowns. And that's what you like to see. You mentioned the McFadden reference. The 501 kid's going to come out here and show off inside the 501 here at Little Rock. And we're going to see what North Little Rock offense has got to do. What's really interesting about their offensive attack, they've got three running backs with 650 yards or more. Three players, I should say. Of course, the quarterback, Cotton's got 800. You mentioned O'Donnell with 800, and Aaron Sims going to back that up with 659. So a nice one, two, three punch. A little variety we're going to see from North Little Rock's offense. O'Donnell got off to a... O'Donnell got off to a great start this season, then had an injury, and that's when Sims kind of took over. They were slow and took it, I, I think, very, they were precautious with uh, O'Donnell. Now he was back last week running the ball, splitting carries with Sims, so I expect to see a lot of that duo today uh, as we get set to kick off the 7A state championship game. The officials are at midfield. They're huddled up. They're... Uh, firing each other up to have a good game. They break their huddle, and now they're ready to go. We see the players huddle up. <laughs> now you see the officials huddling up before the game, too. Yeah, let's, let's hope that's the last time we talk about John Duncan and his crew, but he's the, the white hat for tonight. Of course, we I like to take shots at the guys in the vertical stripes, but hopefully we've got a clean game here today, and because that's what we want to see here as we get the 7A state championship about to happen in Little Rock. I also got to meet the replay crew, and I'll remind you that Arkansas is one of only three states, Alabama and Texas, to have replay play for the state championship game. The Hornets kick off. It's a high pooch kick. North Little Rock fields it at their own 25-yard line, and here come the Hornets defense. A nice job by the Bryant Special Teams Unit on the pooch punt. They knew what they were going to do. A little miscommunication there on North Little Rock, but no disaster there on the first play of the game. And of course, Wes, you know all about it. You've seen the plenty of state championship games in Arkansas and across the country. Nerves play a big part into it. The crowd's not going to be near as big today, of course, like it hasn't been all season long because of COVID. But how do these two teams handle the nerves? Cotton takes the snap, hands it off. Tough running from Frederick O'Donnell. O'Donnell's able to pick up a couple of yards on first down. I think it's very important, Bobby. North Little Rock starts strong. We know this Bryan offense is going to put up points. North Little Rock needs to take advantage of it every time they have the ball. Yeah, and that's one thing you can't have right there is pre-snap penalties, a false start before that play even gets off the ground. So before our first official play from scrimmage, North Little Rock's going in the wrong direction because of a pre-snap penalty. Cotton with O'Donnell. Hand off O'Donnell up the middle. He'll get the penalty yard, or one of the penalty yards back. Second and 13 for North Little Rock. 
No huddle for the Charger Wildcats. Shotgun formation. Cotton hands it off again. O'Donnell, not a lot there. Uh, Brian Horn, the defense is just swarming. Two carries for five yards for North Little Rock's not going to get the job done there. Maybe just four yards. That's what you see this defense. You know, of course, the Brian offense is going to get all the accolades. Over 500 yards a game, more than 50 points a game. But they're winning these games by 40 points because of that defense as well. Well, you know, North Little Rock wants to get the run game established. That's the key for them. They, they can throw it. We've seen it this year. But they still want to run the ball. Running it sets up their passing game. I got to feel like we're going to see our first pass from Kareem Cotton here on third and 11. Cotton back to pass. Pressure coming. Receiver falls down. It's intercepted by the Hornets. No flag on the play. The Hornets with the first big play of the game. A lot of contact there at the top of the route. They were going for the corner route, going to the near sideline. But Austin Schrader was the only guy in the area able to make the easy interception. And Bryant gets the first big momentum swing in this contest as they're going to take over inside the 40 of North Little Rock. There was some contact on the play. The North Little Rock wide receiver fell to the ground. That's why I was looking for a flag. They called it incidental contact. And so Bryant picks up the first turnover of the game. Yeah, now how does the North Little Rock defense answer that? Brian, of course, going to look for go the big play early. I don't know if you can hear it on TV, but the North Little Rock side is full of booze right now. They're not happy with the play. First play for the Hornets. They go to the air. A little miscommunication there as Ledbatter goes back to pass. A nice job by the North Little Rock defense. Had the receiver blanket coverage and brackets on the outside. Randall Adams, the senior defensive back, actually the closest player to that football, but couldn't locate it in time to make a play for the defense. You know, and Ledbetter may have just thrown that away. You, you, you nailed it. He was double covered. There was not much way to put a ball in there, and so he threw it out where nobody could catch it. Second and 10 for Bryant. Ball on the 39-yard line. Ledbetter with Tanner Anderson next to him. Ledbetter has time to throw. Looking back across the field, still time to throw. He completes it. That'll be good for about nine yards. All day to throw. Nice job by the Bryant offensive line. North Little Rock was content with dropping eight guys back in coverage there and hoping to play a little cat and mouse game with the Austin Ledbetter, the Bryant quarterback. And uh, here we've got about third and three coming up. Well, they'll mark Anderson down at the 32-yard line. Give a lot of credit there to the Bryant offensive line. That's the key to their success. You can praise Anderson and all the running backs or the quarterback, but you still got to be able to run it and throw it and have time. That time Ledbetter slips, and that'll bring up fourth down for the Hornets. Nice job by North Little Rock. They read the mesh point there on the defense and forced uh, Ledbetter to keep it on the option to read. He loses his footing right shy of the... 35-yard marker. Now the first big decision. Kind of no man's land here in high school football. Might as well go for it. Uh, about fourth and six. Try to see some momentum early after your defense got you the football with great field position. And not much of a decision here. It would be a 52-yard field goal. You punt it and what you gain, what, 15, 20, 30 yards maybe. So they're going to go for it on fourth and about six. Led better. Time to throw. He'll scramble. He's got plenty of room to run. He's got the first down and more. Bryant spread the offense out there, had four receivers to his left. The defense is right. The defense bailed everybody out back into coverage. The middle of the field was wide open, and the experienced Ledbetter took advantage. Ledbetter with 252 yards rushing this season. He's not afraid to run it. Quickly, Bryant to the line of scrimmage. Ledbetter hands it off. Room to run. Strong run. First down for the Hornets. Nice job by number 35, Tavon Aikens there for North Little Rock. If he doesn't get his hands on Anderson and ride him to the ground, that might have been a walk-in touchdown for the Hornets. Tanner Anderson picks up the first down for Bryant. You see the hole there. Great job by the offensive line. Ledbetter hands it off to Anderson again. Anderson. This time picks up about three. You see the patience of Anderson there just waiting for a hole to, to, to come open in that zone read. And nice job to make the play in space by the North Little Rock defender to, to limit the gain of one and suck up a second and long. The time North Little Rock did a really good job of stringing it out. They had defenders out wide, just nowhere for Anderson to go. That front three is going to be taxed all day long for North Little Rock. Going to have a pre-snap penalty on uh, Bryant this time. Look like maybe... Uh, Hayden Schroeder was a little excited. 
and jumped a little bit. Yeah. You see big number 70 in there, Braxton Johnson. He's a junior, number uh, bigger and white, got the, the blue shirt hanging out in the middle of that North Little Rock defense. He's going to be critical to set the, set the point of the line of scrimmage to really limit what Bryant can do up the middle. Ledbetter back to pass, throws it back across the field. Nowhere to throw it, so he takes off running. Thought Ledbetter did a great job that time. The North Little Rock defender jumped up, and the ball would have probably been knocked down, deflected, or maybe, who knows, maybe he could have picked it off, so he just tucked it and ran with yeah, it. Yeah, what well, Ledbetter also saw in the flat, they had the screen set up, but 35 to Von Aikens, again, out there in the flat, he would have picked that off and might have been off to the races for North Little Rock. So that's where the experience comes into play. Ledbetter's played in the state title game now three times. He, he's seen about everything North Little Rock can throw at him, and he recognized the play wasn't going to work and lived to fight another down. I want to apologize to Hayden Schrader. It wasn't him who jumped offside. It was 83, not 84. So I know his mom's already yelling at me. Ledbetter looking to pass. Nothing there. Takes off scrambling again right up the middle, down to about the six, seven yard line. He's short of a first down. So now you'll have a decision. Yeah, you've seen what North Little Rock is content with doing. They're content with letting Austin Ledbetter try to beat him with his legs. They're going to drop eight of essentially every time out. It looks like Bryant's got no decision to make, and they're going to go for it on this fourth down. North Little Rock's going to give the middle of the field to the quarterback run and think, okay, try to beat us with your legs, but you're not going to be with your arms here in this early in this first period. Be fourth and goal. All right, there goes. No, they can get a first down at the three. So it's fourth and three. Ball is at the six yard line. Three receivers to the top of the field. Ledbetter rolls to his right. Across the middle. Receiver was blanketed and a great job by North Little Rock covering up that pass. Marion Williams all over the receiver in the back in line of the end zone and a great job by North Little Rock's defense. The sudden change. So many times you see the momentum swing and a team scores really quickly after a turnover. The wild charging Wildcats defense, they bent. They didn't break there. Going to get tip of the cap to that defensive side of the football. Big time play by North Little Rock's defensive back and Marion Williams. Great coverage. And now now the North Little Rock Charging Wildcats offense comes back on the field. The turnover does not cost them any points. It hurts them in field position, but no points given up. So a big boost from that Charging Wildcat defense. Green Cotton hands it off. O'Donnell up the middle. Had a hole there for a second, but Bryant quickly closes up. Don't forget, you can join the football conversation on social media. Just use the hashtag ARPBS Sports. <laughs> Second and eight for North Little Rock. Cotton looking over at the sideline, getting the play from his coaches. You see this a lot more in high school football and even in college football. They don't huddle, but it's not exactly a hurry-up type offense. Cotton has O'Donnell to his left. Tight end comes in motion. Looks like Bryant may have jumped. Flags are down. Now we'll have to see if North Little Rock drew them off sides or if North Little Rock moved first. Before the snap, encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty, still remains second down. First mistake for the Bryant defense. You had them second and long. You had them kind of where you want it, and you give them a free five yards, and that'll set up, set up second and manageable for North Little Rock. This may not be the platform for, but I'd love to see that penalty not be a dead ball. You know, let them play it out, maybe have the offense have a free play. Cotton tries to draw him off sides again. This time, Bryant doesn't move. Still has O'Donnell to his left. Fakes the handoff to O'Donnell. Cotton across the middle. Nice throw. First down for North Little Rock and more. First big play for North Little Rock. That's Chris Jefferson, his wide receiver with the catch. Jefferson leads the team with 30 catches this season, and you saw why right there. Yeah, that's catch number 31, average 21 and a half yards per reception. Not quite that big of a play there, but Bryant did a nice job of bumping a run across the, the whole line of scrimmage, but you see him coming across the middle and caught with a perfect pass. Hits him right in stride and a big first down to get out of the shadow of the goalpost. 
Cotton fakes the handoff, and he's throwing again and again. He's got Jefferson, another first down for North Little Rock. Two quick catches, two first downs for this North Little Rock offense, and there we're starting to see the progression of Kareem Cotton. If you've watched these title games the last two seasons, the passing game wasn't a huge threat for North Little Rock, but those were two perfectly thrown balls to his leading receiver right there for Jefferson, who's now got 32 catches on the season. Bullet right there. That was a well-thrown, well-executed pass. Do that with confidence, and that's probably one thing he hasn't had a lot of the last couple of years in the passing game. North Little Rock started this drive on their own four-yard line, and quickly they're out to the 45, 46-yard line. That pass a little bit behind Jefferson, looking to go to him on three straight plays. Yeah, it was worked the first two times, trying to get the football to your playmakers in, in space, and this, that was just a numbers game. Bryant had the numbers defensively, so even if Jefferson makes the catch, probably not a big gainer. Second and 10. Cotton getting everyone lined up. He's going to have two receivers to his right. Jefferson's one of those to his right. Cotton hands it off. It's the first time we've seen Sims in this game. Sims tries to bounce it outside, but nothing there. Actually, that was Torrance Moore on the carry. I just assumed after seeing that two there, that was going to be the backup running back, Aaron Sims. But a nice job by Bryant's defense to stretch it out, 44 and two, clean up the, the damage there. Miles Aldridge finishes off the tackle. Now Bryant has North Little Rock where they want him, third and long. It's going to be third and 12. Moore still in the backfield with Cotton. Gonna have three receivers to his right. Cotton looking to pass. Passes across the middle. It's completed to Moore. He's going to be close to a first down. It, it'll depend on the mark. Moore just has seven catches on the season coming to this contest, but that's a big one there. It's, it is going to be just a little shy of the first down marker, though. Got to say it's fourth and two footballs? Not, Maybe. <laughs> not quite to the 44 that they need to reach. Cotton's just going to sneak it. Cotton's going to have the first down. Nice shot by North Little Rock's offense to get on the football and go quickly, not allow Bryant's defense to, to get piled up in the middle of the field. And North Little Rock's got their first offensive possession really on the move here, their second time they've had the football. Another big first down for North Little Rock. Let's head down to the sideline real quick and check in with Hayden. All right, we'll check back in with Hayden in a few minutes. Hand off to O'Donnell. Spinning. Nothing much there. Picks up a couple yards. So far, Bryant's defense is passing the test in the running game. It's been North Little Rock's passing game to Jefferson that's been able to move the ball. And that's probably what Bryant came into this football game thinking, okay, we know that North Little Rock can run the football. They've done it all season long. They've got three three guys with 600, 700 yards on the ground. Make them beat us through the air. Kind of like you want to make Bryant beat you on the ground. North Little Rock's offense, especially the passing game, will have to make some plays. We're seeing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage from Bryant. Looks like they're stacking the box, expecting the run, and that's what they get. O'Donnell, there you see the power from O'Donnell. Squares up the defender, pushes him over backwards, and picks up about six yards, seven yards on the play. That'll bring up third and short. Those are the types of runs that are nice in the first quarter. They're really nice in the fourth quarter because Bryant's going to get tired of tackling number 11, the big-bodied running back for North Little Rock in the second half, and they can continue to have successful plays, five, six, seven yards like that one. You saw the power of O'Donnell there. He, he pushes on linemen out of the yeah. way. And then he just bulldozed over a horned defender and picks up about seven on the play. You're told as a running back, run over anybody in that hole, including your own offensive lineman. And well, one of his big uglies up front got the wrong end of that one. First time today, we'll see Cotton carry the ball. And Cotton picks up the first down. I guess he had the quarterback sneak. So that's officially a carry. But that time, a design run for Cotton. And he gets another first down for North Little Rock. You've really got to like this drive for the Charging Wildcats. They've really put together a really nice uh, possession here. Not only controlling the clock, but eating, eating up big chunks of yardage. And the one thing, and of course, J.R. Eldridge probably said it a hundred times this week, guys, they can't score if they don't have the football. And here we are, final two minutes of this first quarter. They've only had the football once. Yeah, this drive started on the four-yard line. And, and quickly, they've moved it out to the 29 of Bryant. First and 10, minute 32 in the first quarter. Cotton with two running backs with him this time. 
Hands it off to O'Donnell up the middle. Gain of about three. You know, one thing, Wes, that you've probably talked about it this week, I know I've had multiple conversations about it, is how does Bryant handle the pressure? And you're asking, okay, how do they handle the pressure? They're the best team they're supposed to be here. Well, there's been the conversation. This may be one of the best teams in the last 25 years in all of Arkansas. So they know they have to go out and finish it off the right way. So how do they handle those inner, inner mental demons and try to get that out of your mind and just go out and play football? Well, and you think about uh, the frustration probably on that Bryant sideline with the offense. They, they drove down. They weren't able to score and got stopped. And now they're just standing over there waiting to get back into the game. Jet sweep for North Little Rock gets to the outside. That's Jefferson. We've seen him catch some passes. Now we see him run the ball close to a first down. It's clear they want to get him the football as much as they can on the jet sweep there. Another big play for Jefferson. The third time he's had the football in his hands and been able to pick up a first down for this North Little Rock offense. They will move the chains. So North Little Rock, great drive for North Little Rock. Started at their own four. Let's see if they can get some points out of it. Ball is at the 18-yard line. Getting close to the end of the first quarter. Just 43 seconds left in the quarter. Cotton looking to throw. Throws it up in the corner of the end zone. Nothing there this time. Nice coverage there by LaCroix Brumfield in the end zone. Just man-to-man. -man. We've seen it. And, Wes, you've pointed it out. The Hornets are content just going mano a mano on the outside. And Brumfield with the great coverage. And Cotton had to essentially throw that one in the front row. Yeah, it's, a, it's very interesting to see these two coordinators go at it. Brian is trying to take away the run, stack in the box. North Little Rock wants to run it, but at some point, you got to say, if you're going to play us man-to-man, -man, we got the receivers to beat you, we're going to throw it. Second and ten. Cotton hands it off. O'Donnell up the middle. Picks up two. And that could be the last play of the first period and the, the way that North Little Rock's been so methodical, they may be content with taking it to the end of the period because you look at the time of possession and it's got to be about 10 to 2. We were supposed to start the game and kick off at 12-10. I've got 12-28. That'll be an 18-minute first quarter. Fast and probably exactly how North Little Rock drew it up. Be the first to know what's happening at Arkansas PBS and get the latest sports updates. Download the Engage Arkansas PBS app today for exclusive content, and we are 12 minutes in the books. No score between North Little Rock. No score between North Little Rock and Bryan as we get ready to go to the second quarter. Stick around. You're watching the state football championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. We are the curious. Wow. <laughs> the adventurous. Oh. Those venturing out for the first time. <laughs> and those who've never lost our sense of wonder. Whoa. Are you seeing this? We are the hungry. Okay. The strong. I must be the greatest. The joyful. A happy little cloud. We believe there is always more we can uncover. More we can explore. We believe in the capacity for goodness. And the potential for greatness. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. PBS. 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 No score in the first quarter of the 7A state championship game between North Little Rock and Bryant, but the Charge and Wildcats are knocking on the door. Third and nine with the ball on the 17. Bobby, I got to think, North Little Rock coaches are pretty happy with that first It's quarter. a perfect plan of execution there for North Little Rock, and now they need to take advantage of great field position because this chance is not going to happen too often. Cotton under pressure, scrambling. A lot of Hornets there, and he is met violently by Miles Aldrich. Now, neither team has brought a lot of pressure to start this contest in the first 12 minutes, but first play of the second quarter, Bryant dials up a well-timed blitz and gets Kareem Cotton off his point. Now North Little Rock's going to have to settle for a field goal attempt on what was a really impressive drive. Yeah, Bryant drove down. Instead of uh, trying a field goal, they went for it on fourth down. Did not get it. Now North Little Rock on fourth down. They're going to try to get some points. It'll be a 38-yard field goal from the left hash. Good snap, good hold, the kick is no good. 
barely had the distance, and I could not tell from the angle, but it was just a little wide right. Yeah, Liam Silhurst had a great season, 61 of 63 PATs, 11 of 14 on field goal attempts with that one just wide right, and North Little Rock can't take advantage of the big long drive there. Now we'll finally see this Bryant Hornet offense that we haven't seen what feels like an hour, but it's really been about eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, one possession for Bryant in the first quarter. That's not the way the Hornets are used to doing things offensively. Ledbetter hands it off on first down and nothing there. North Little Rock defense doing a great job of not allowing any running room. Great job at Big 70. Braxton Johnson can already tell he's my favorite player on the field right now. A man of size, much like myself, gets in the backfield and blows that one up and lets the rest of his defense finish him off. I went to a North Little Rock semifinal game last week against Cabot. And in the first half while I was there, big number 70 had a couple of sacks. And I hope we get to see his celebration dance. <laughs> he likes to kind of cradle the baby. You know, the thing the kids yeah. are doing these days. Yeah, we let, we saw that last week from him. Ledbetter rolling out to his left. Nothing there. He comes back to his right. Got a receiver one on one. That's Nichols fighting, hand fighting, and they'll get the call. You see that so many times with the ball underthrown. The receiver's trying to fight back to get back to it. The cornerback doesn't know where the ball is, and there's contact, and sometimes it's an easy call. Sometimes it's an easy call. Sometimes you might like to see it be a no call. Either way, there was a lot of hand fighting, like you mentioned uh, there, Wes, and we'll have to see how they sort this one off as Bryant's receiver, Nichols, had to fight back through the defender That's and through the football. Defense. The 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. The distance will result first down. I wonder sometimes if the quarterback doesn't intentionally underthrow those yeah. balls sometimes because you know what's going to happen. That defensive back doesn't know where the ball is. That wide, His wide receiver starts coming back for it, and he just runs into him. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good coverage by Williams, who made the great play on fourth down in the end zone. I'd like to see that one maybe be a no call, but they get paid a lot more than we do to call this game, and they know what they're talking about. Led better. Hands it off, and nothing there. Look at that charge and Wildcat defense swarmed to the ball. There's been three names we've already called a ton for this North Little Rock defense, and 35, Tavion Akins is one of them. Met Anderson right in the hole. Nice job of, of stacking him up and letting the rest of his defense help finish him off. You know one name we haven't called yet? Except for when I messed up and then blamed him for a false start that he didn't do, Hayden Schrader. Yep, he's going to line up in the slots. Going to be the top of your screen. Going to be the middle receiver of that three receiver set to the left side of the offense. Schrader came into the game with 68 catches, 1,400 yards, and 20 touchdowns. That's how close that coverage is. The two corners just stacked on top of the receivers. And I think they're going to get one up for being too close. Did he line up offsides? Well, they're going to say it was motion on the offense. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. That's confidence. You know, you've never met a defensive back, especially a corner who lacks confidence at any level. Uh, but lining up that close to a receiver playing bump and run just exudes confidence. And you can tell North Little Rock's defensive backs are feeling it right now. Second and 15 for Bryant. Ball is on the 30-yard line. Got nine and a half minutes left in the first half. No score if you're just joining us. Second drive of the game for Bryant. Ledbetter looking to pass. Not a lot of pressure. He has receiver wide open. That's going to be a first down and much more. That's his running back out of the backfield. Tanner Anderson with the catch. Yeah, Anderson and Jamarian Bracey oh, it's have, done a really, yeah, they've done a really nice job in the passing game. And you think of running backs as not being a huge factor in the passing game. But Anderson's got 17 catches on the season, including one already tonight. So Bryant's not afraid to mix it up, especially when they're just going man to man on the outside. That means you've got a running back on a linebacker. Ledbetter going to throw again. Scrambles up the middle. He's going to pick up a couple of yards. Time he had a couple receivers that was free, but the pressure from North Little Rock prevented a big play. You were pointing at one receiver. I was looking at another receiver at the at the top of the field. Yeah, North Little Rock secondary passed off the coverage to his buddy in the backfield and or the back end of the defense, and he wasn't there. And his receiver is running wide open. But you mentioned the pressure got there for North Little Rock and limited that big play. Ledbetter does pick up five yards, so it's second and five. Ball into North Little Rock territory. Hand off. 
My man. Nothing there. Brace. Look at Bracey fighting, though. That's the big back for the Bryant Hornets. Met at the line of scrimmage. I was ready to say no gain. And he just kept moving his legs. Watch the replay. Watch him moving his legs. And will not go down. That's big Braxton Johnson who made the initial contact in the backfield, but give a lot of credit to Bracey there. Didn't give up on the play. Fought for two yards that easily could have been a loss of two. Two strong, powerful guys going at it right there. Third and three for the Hornets. Ledbetter's going to pass. Going across the middle. He's got his receiver, Schrader, open for the first down. North Little Rock had him eyed. Had double coverage on Schrader in the slot coming across the middle. But just perfect pass by Ledbetter and finally hooks up with his best target for catch number 69 on the year. Schrader moves the ball to the 24-yard line. First and 10 for the Hornets. A lot of empty backfield on this drive for Bryant. He's got five receivers. Fakes the quick pass. Goes to the sideline. That's completed. Receiver was inbounds inside the 10. It's a nice job by Robert Hendricks to make the catch and also take the big hit. Stay in bounds. He was running wide open on the sideline. The safety got over just a little too late. Now we got a first and goal. Ledbetter with the back to his right. He's going to hand it off to Bracey. Bracey's got room to run, and Bracey's in. Touchdown, Hornets. The passing game did a lot of the damage on that drive, but it was Bracey over the left side, followed his two big blockers out in front, and was in contact until he cr crossed the goal line, and the top-ranked Hornets on their 29-game win streak strike first. Great blocking, and Jamarian Bracey takes advantage of it. The Hornets get on the board. They lead 6 to nothing with 7 minutes and 21 seconds to go in the first half. 16th rushing touchdown of the season for Bracey. Extra point is good. Hornets take a seven to nothing lead. You are watching the state football championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service. Real people. Copy of any of the state championship games, go to M and M Productions.net to place your order. How about that drive from the Hornets? It's a big answer drive. Your defense gets a stop. North Little Rock mixes the field goal, and we finally get to see that high vaunted Brian Hornet attack and capped off by the touchdown run by Bracey. High kickoff is uh, caught around the 15 yard line. Nice return. Charging Wildcats. They'll get it out to the 35 yard line. That's where they'll start their third drive of the game. It has been a quickly played game. North Little Rock took the opening kickoff, had an interception that ended their first drive. Hornets couldn't do anything on their first drive. Well, they got it down inside the red zone, but they could not score. Then North Little Rock goes on a long, time-consuming drive all the way down the field, but they were unable to get any points when the field goal was no good. And then the Hornets, with their second drive of the game, drives down the field and produces the first point. So that's where we are. Both teams have had the ball two times, and North Little Rock trails 7 to nothing. Yeah, if you're North Little Rock, you wouldn't mind taking seven minutes off the clock here with this drive and see if you can get into the half. Cotton hands it off to his wide receiver, Jefferson, spinning, running, gets four yards on the play. Not a bad way to start the drive. Chris Jefferson, very active game for him. He's got a couple of catches, a couple of runs. 
You've got to find a way to get the ball to your playmakers, and Jefferson has clearly been one of those guys for North Little Rock. Just three touchdowns through the air, but is averaging 21 yards per catch this season. So you get him the ball in space, and he's shown he can make some things happen. I think North Little Rock would love to run out this last six yeah. minutes and not let Bryant's offense back on the field. Cotton looking to pass, dumps it off to his running back, but it's dropped, incomplete. It'll be third and about six. O'Donnell lost the football, lost his helmet, and defender right there in his face. I believe that was Aldridge again. He's been all over the field for this Bryant Hornet defense. And it sets up a third and medium-ish. For this North Little Rock offense. About that time, Cotton may take off running. We've only seen Cotton run it three times. One was a quarterback sneak, so two other times Cotton has run the ball. And he, he, he's, he's a great runner. And Brian so far has done a good job of containing him and keeping him in the pocket. Cotton quick pass out to his running back. Hornets defense was all over it. Great play from the Hornets on third down. It's a, a loss of four yards, so it's going to be fourth and ten. That's a great job of recognition by Garrett Bell. He saw the screen set up early, came out of his defensive lineman stance, able to gobble up the running back and shut that drive down before it could get going. Such a huge play. Now North Little Rock has to punt it. They're able to get a first down, keep the chain, you know, move the chains, keep the clock going. Maybe can run off some time, but now they're going to punt, and Bryant gets the ball. North Little Rock kind of has problems with the issue, but the punter gets it away. Bryant will take over on about their own 33-yard line. Now, this is where Bryant has counted on things spiraling out of control for their opponent. A quick score, a defensive stop, and they usually follow that up with another score. So if you're North Little Rock, maybe change the look that the Bryant Hornets offense is going to see here. Give them something they're not, they're maybe not prepared for, maybe not ready to see in this spot, because you can't just sit back and let Ledbetter attempt to pick you apart. And, of course, you've got those two really good running backs between Anderson and Bracey, who now have 28 touchdowns on the ground this year. Brian beat North Little Rock 58 to 21 back on October 30th. Last year in the state championship game, it was 21 to 7, more like a game we're seeing today. Ledbetter with it. He's got a running back to his right. Ledbetter looking to pass. Got a screen set up, but North Little Rock does a great job of reading that screen and the defender slips by the offensive lineman and makes the tackle. Great job again, 35, Tavian Aikens. Great job from his linebacker spot to recognize the screen, avoid the blockers in space, and, and force the runner out of bounds two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Aikens is having himself a heck of a first half. I thought Brian had something set up there. They had an offensive lineman out there. He was ready to make that block and free up some space for his running back, but Aikens, give him credit. He slipped that block and made the tackle. Led better, looking to pass, got plenty of time, just a three-man rush. He finds his favorite receiver, Schrader. That'll pick up the lost yardage and some, probably about seven yards on the play. So Bryant will have third in a very manageable five yards. A nice job by Ledbetter just to get the ball out in space to Schrader, his top target man, catch number 70 on the season. But you got to give North Little Rock's defense a lot of credit. They've limited him and the Hornet offense for the most part. But these are the downs that if you're North Little Rock, you've got to win. You've got to win the third and the medium to long. You can't let these drives extend out for Bryant because that's when they're going to hit you with the big play. Big play here, Bryant. Bryant up seven to nothing, about five minutes left in the half, looking for more points. Ledbetter hands it off. Good blocking, first down and more. Tanner Anderson spinning, <laughs> moves the pile, flag down. It's a great play call by Buck James and company. It's third and five. Everybody's expecting Austin Ledbetter to go to the air. Hands it off to his talented running back, Tanner Anderson, who came in just 31 yards shy of 1,000 yards on the ground for a season, picks up the first down. But now we've got to check the laundry. I don't know if you could hear the surprise in my voice when he handed it <laughs> off. That, I did not expect that. And North Little Rock's defense did not expect it either. And Anderson picks up the first down and a lot more. The Hornets are cheering, so the penalty must be on North Little Rock. Personal foul. Grasping the face mask. Against the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty for the end of the run. First down. That's a big, big penalty against the charging Wildcats defense. You're starting to make some plays. You're going toe to toe with Bryant. The one thing you can't do is give up big penalties. And now that's the second 15 yarder. Of course, you go back to the pass interference call on the last drive and now a face mask call. 
Tanner Anderson so hard to bring down. We've seen it all year. I think it was against Trinity Christian where everyone thought Anderson was down, but he landed on a defender, spun, got up, and ran for the touchdown. Anderson has it. He's coming back to his right. North Little Rock's there, but now he avoids one tackler. They still didn't get him to the ground. They finally pushed him out of bounds. Looked like he was going to, going to lose about five or six yards. He ends up gaining one. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great job by Anderson. That was blown up in the backfield. North Little Rock has gotten some penetration right at the, the point of attack, the line of scrimmage, but haven't been able to make the play. I'm going to give a lot of credit to Bryant's strength and conditioning program. The running backs are just strong, able to bounce off that tackle and pick up a couple. Was that your guy Braxton Johnson blowing it up again? No, that wasn't him. That looks like that's, that, that may be 61, Tarek Smith. Also not a small man. Ledbetter hands it off as Tanner Anderson again, and Anderson nothing there. No gain on the play, maybe a half a yard. North Little Rock's defense doing a great job back-to-back -back plays. It's going to be third and about seven for Bryant. I got to think this is two-down territory anyway. Yeah, that's kind of that no-man's land we saw on that first drive. They had the ball just inside the 30, about the 29. Probably don't want to attempt a field goal probably have enough confidence in their defense that even if they don't get it they're going to stop North Little Rock so I think you're telling your offensive coordinator you got two plays here to get a first down led better back to pass plenty of time three man rush for North Little Rock finally finds a receiver open it's a first down and more looks like that's Nichols along the sideline he gets it inside the 10 yard line it'll be first and goal for Bryant just a sophomore, Nichols did an excellent job on the whip route. Looks like he's moving across the, the middle of the field and puts his foot in the ground and goes back to the sideline, and he was wide open. Does a nice job tipping toeing down the sidelines, and just like that, Bryant's inside the 10 again. Great job by Nichols keeping those feet in bounds. Ledbetter hands it off. It's Anderson with the blocker. Anderson to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Bryant. They came back to that left side of the offensive line and scored on that essentially the same play the first time and come right back to it. Just a different running back and Tanner Anderson got a baker's dozen on the season. 13 rushing touchdowns for the Bryant senior. Great blocking from the Hornets offensive lineman and the wide receiver. You got to give him some love there yes. at the corner of the end zone. Basically went untouched into the end zone for the Hornets second touchdown. 13 to nothing. Good hold. Good kick, 14 to nothing. The Hornets score on their third drive. So we've seen three good drives from the Hornets. One of them, though, ended without points on a fourth down inside the 10-yard line. The next two possession, Bryant drives it down and scores. So it's 14 to nothing. You are watching the state football championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. With our busy lives today, we often forget the greatest gift of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I hope all of us will take the time and share the love of Christ this season. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Arkansas PBS is proud to bring you Urban Forge, Ozark Artistry an original documentary about remarkable Arkansas artisans who utilize the ancient craft of metalsmithing to create modern works of art. Experience their passion and pride of craftsmanship as they keep an ancient tradition alive, passing it down through generations with their skill and one-of-a-kind creativity. Urban Forge, Ozark Artistry. Coming up next... Three minutes, 47 seconds left in the first half. Bryant Hornets, second touchdown of the game. They lead North Little Rock 14 to nothing. Bobby, this is a big drive for North Little Rock. They need some momentum going into that locker room. Yeah, got to weather the storm. It starts here at the kickoff return, but you mentioned that you can't let it snowball out of control. North Little Rock's got to corral the nerves, corral the football if it's loose on the ground, and try to get some momentum going into the half. Let's head down to the sideline and check in with Hayden Balgavy. To report earlier, man. It's a beautiful day down here in Little Rock, but what an ideal drive for Bryant right there. It seems like they couldn't get anything going. You only get two drives really in the first part of this first half, and then Tanner Anderson running like he's been running all season long, punching it in, and Bryant taking care of business so far, up 14 to nothing. So North Little Rock jogs out onto the field. Cotton leading his guys. They'll have the ball at the 19-yard line. 
three minutes and 42 seconds to try to make something happen. Man comes in motion. That's a big hole and a big play for North Little Rock. It looks like they'll pick up a first down on their first play. It's Jefferson again. The sun shining and some of the glare it was hard to read that number. I wanted to assume it was number three because of the, as much as they've got gotten him involved in the game. Yeah, they're trying to get him the, the football. He's already got three carries on the speed sweep. Jefferson's doing a nice job of giving North Little Rock those big explosive plays that you're going to need to get a drive going as we're about to hit the three and a half minute mark here in the second quarter. Cotton with the running back to his left. He's back to pass, has time to throw, and Cotton has a receiver co coming across the middle of the field. It's Jefferson again. He picks up five yards on the play. Nice job by the offensive line. Gave Cotton a ton of protection. You know, Bryant was content with dropping seven back in coverage there. Played a little defense and let everything happen underneath you and did a nice job of getting to the football and limiting that short pass to exactly that, just three yards. Tough spot for North Little Rock. They're only going to give him three yards on the play. It'll bring up second and seven. Cotton's getting O'Donnell where he wants him in the backfield. Time to pass. He's going to take off running. Ryan is there. Two horned defenders, but look at the effort from Cotton. Stretches the ball forward. They're going to give him a first down. That's a great job by your quarterback to know exactly where the chains are. Of course, there's no magical yellow line on the field if you're playing. He knew he had to get the football to the 40, extended his arms out. But one thing you saw there, and we had the advantage of watching it from the press box, all the eyes for Bryant's defense is on Kareem Cotton. As soon as he tucked the football down, all 11 emerged on number four, but he was still able to get enough to get the first down. Some teams will use a spy on a quarterback. Two or three on him. There were two yeah. spies. You're going to need a couple. Jefferson goes in motion. We've got a flag on the play. It looks like North Little Rock jumped. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the touchdown nice run against down. Cabot last week showed the, the top-end elite speed that Cotton had. Game's tied at 42. You want your quarterback to make a play, and he tucks it and runs. You're talking about the end of a marathon contest, and he's pulling away from defenders. And so Bryant knows the type of speed they're up against, and so that's why they're using at least two spies on a given play. Cotton fakes the handoff. He's rolling to his right, throws back across the middle of the field, little behind his receiver, but I think he threw it behind him on purpose because yes. if he leads him there, there's a big-time collision. Yeah, Austin Schroeder was right there. He already has the, the first interception, the first turnover this contest, and if Cotton leads his receiver there, Schroeder has his second interception, and he might have been off to the races as he read that perfectly. Yeah, he had Jefferson open, but he also saw that Brian Safety was there waiting on it, so he threw it a little bit behind him, and probably a smart throw from the quarterback. Second and 15, that penalty, tough penalty for North Little Rock trying to get something going before they go into the locker room. Ball on the 35. They need to get to midfield for a first down. Cotton, quick pass. Receiver wasn't looking for it. Cotton unloaded it, but the receiver never turned his head, never had a chance to catch it. Yeah, Ja'Cory Stewart wasn't ready for the football. Might have been a little overthrown in the first place, but Stewart couldn't get out of his route and get his head around before the football whizzed past him. And these are the situations that if you're North Little Rock, you have to avoid. Third and 15, now Bryant has a chance to pin the ears back, drop into coverage, and really have every, have North Little Rock against the ropes offensively. Look, and Bobby, we said this is a big drive for North Little Rock, try to get some points before the half, get some momentum. But if they have to punt here, Bryant's got time That's to go right. down and score. And what was a close game is all of a sudden 21 to nothing. Cotton back to pass. Looking deep across the middle and overthrows his receiver, and it's intercepted. Hornets, they're not settling for the interception. They want a lot more. Big block but he's pushed out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Hornets' second pick of the game. Malachi Graham was perfect spot. The sophomore defensive back read that one. Kareem Cotton overthrew his receiver. Graham picks it off, and the Hornets, again, like you mentioned, Wes, knocking on the door. They're inside the 10, got another goal-to-go -go situation. Cotton had time, looked like he had space to room to run, excuse me, but he overshoots his man, goes right to Malachi, and he was, well, had a convoy of blockers in North Little Rock's lucky to get him out of bounds before he crossed the goal line. You know, Brian has a lot of offensive weapons. They want to, may want to move Malachi to offense. Yeah, just a sophomore. A good return. Got to be an upper class to play offense for this squad. Okay, we'll <laughs> see him on offense next year, maybe. Ledbetter hands it off. Bracy inside the five, stays on his feet, power 
Powers into the end zone. Touchdown, Bryant. Would it shock you to say that they ran behind the left side of the offensive line there for a nine-yard touchdown? It's the third time they've gone behind the left guard, left tackle. Just overpower you from that left side. And just like that, Bryant, the number one team in the state, looking like it, a PAT away from a 21-0 lead. And look at that running back as he comes off the field. That is a big, strong man. And that was a powerful run. Bracey would not go down. And now Bryant leads 20 to nothing, pending this extra point. It hits the crossbar. No good. So the first mistake from Bryant and it's 20 to nothing. Two minutes, three seconds to go. One play drive for the Hornets after the interception. And what's so dangerous about that quick turnover, the quick score, Bryant gets the football to start the second half. And so the Hornets really have a chance to put some distance between themselves and their biggest rival, these charging Wildcats. And now, again, we mentioned that they still got three timeouts. They still have two minutes left. North Little Rock has some time to get something going before the half. But now down three scores. You don't want to get into panic mode too early. There's a lot of football to be played. But everything's kind of stacked up against the guys in blue and gold right now see J.R. Eldridge there talking to his offense yeah encouraging them he knows this is a big drive this this is a chance for his special teams to make a play give them some good field position and then the offense needs to respond offense needs to go down and put some points on the board to give them some kind of momentum going into the half if not the worst thing you can have is a three and out and look there's you know, two minutes left, Brian has all their timeouts. They would love to have the ball back and put maybe a nail in the coffin. Here's the kick. It's going to be another high kick fielded by North Little Rock at about the 20-yard line. Charger Wildcats have a little room to run. Gets to the outside. Hornets pull him down at the 34. Just noticed there on that kickoff was Malachi Graham, the player who intercepted the pass and ran back into the tent. So multi-talented Mr. Graham, the sophomore. So... You know, one thing a lot of times you see a game start to get out of the way are players or coaches who haven't been in the stage before. Even though this is J.R. Eldridge's first season with North Little Rock, he's no stranger to the title game. He won a pair of state championships as the head coach at Arkadelphia. He's been in this stage before. He's been in big games time and time again. So he's not going to panic. Those players are going to panic, but they know they've got to come out and execute flawlessly for the last two quarters and two minutes if they want to get back in this contest. Well, we spoke to J.R. Eldridge this week on, on the buzz, and he said, you know, look, look, this team is used to being in the championship game. This team has been in five straight state championship games. The, these guys, these seniors were, what, in the seventh grade? They've been in the, it's North Little Rock. Has been, that's all they know. Yeah. They, they expect to be in the state championship game. Like they won it once, but they've been there yeah. the other four times. Yeah, they beat Bentonville back in 2017. North Little Rock, good run on first down. They'll try it again with O'Donnell. O'Donnell up the middle, room to run. O'Donnell picks up a first down, takes it across midfield. Clock will stop, moves it to the 43 of the Hornets. I like North Little Rock not changing the philosophy, run the football, still have plenty of time, have all three timeouts, and you get the advantage of the clock stopping to move the change in high school. Minute 20 to go. Cotton quickly hands it off up the middle again. O'Donnell first down and more. O'Donnell, do you see the power from him? Gets it inside the 25-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 23. Two big runs from O'Donnell. You don't see that happen very often. You've got a, one defender riding your back, and you run over another one in the process. Nice job by O'Donnell on back-to-back -back runs, and Bryant's defense going to burn a timeout to try to gather themselves for these last 67 seconds. You may can hear the ooze here at War Memorial Stadium as they show the replay on the big video board the fans from both teams recognize the power from O'Donnell picks up 17 yards on his first carry 19 yards on that carry so Fred O'Donnell goes 36 yards in the last two plays he's now up to 55 yards on the game with nine carries yeah nine carries you mentioned the 55 yards I mean he's a he's a guy that is used to having the football in his hands averaging about eight yards a carry on the season he's used to carrying that load you mentioned the injury but he's healthy doesn't have the 150 or 200 carries that some running backs in high school might have at this point of the season I rely on him find some way to put it in the end zone before the half and now you got a fresh running back a bruising running back that'll give you a chance in the second half well, they found a little something with the Hornets defense there attacking the middle of the field now you'll see this Hornet defense probably change things up yep. putting a little extra defender right there in the middle in case North Little Rock wants to run O'Donnell again up the middle 
Two receivers to Cotton's right. O'Donnell also to his right. Here comes Jefferson in motion. Fake it to Jefferson. Cotton keeps it. Cotton to about the 21-yard line. Pick up a two. Yeah, we've seen so many times they've handed it off to Jefferson on that speed sweep, hoping to catch Bryant napping there. But nice job by the Hornets defense to stay at home and, and not bite on the play fake and focus in on number four, Kareem Cotton. Cotton's such a huge part of this North Little Rock offense. 18 touchdowns passing, 18 touchdowns rushing. Bryant doing a good job of bottling up Cotton. A lot of time coming off on this play. 30 seconds left. O'Donnell moves to Cotton's left. Here comes Jefferson in motion. Cotton wants to throw it back. They're going to mark him out of bounds, so the clock will stop with about 17 seconds. It's second and seven. Or bring up third and about five after picking up two yards there. Try to throw back to his tight end, Jalen Gloss on the 6'3", 240 pound tight end. But nice job again by Bryant to stay home and, and shut that one down. And now we've got a big third down attempt coming up. I think North Little Rock's going to burn a timeout to think about it. A little bit trying to catch uh, Brian off guard. They were they brought everything. You, you, you start with bringing Jefferson in motion to the left. All eyes are in, on him. And then North Little Rock rolls to the left. And you're hoping everybody from Brian's defense is rolling to the left. Eyes are over there. And then you stop and throw it back to your big tight end. And he walks into the end zone. But uh, that wasn't the case. The Hornets yeah. had three defenders out there, so great job from them being disciplined. Oh, one word you used there is the eyes. That was the, all about eye discipline there. A lot of window dressing there for North Little Rock. Jefferson goes in motion. You're hoping everybody's looking to the left side of that offensive formation and get the throwback to the right, but nice job by the Bryant linebackers to get out there and shut down Glosson for a minimal game. Big play for North Little Rock. Chance to put some points on the board before they go into half. Did a good job of working the clock and not giving Bryant the ball back this time. Yep. 17 seconds, so it's third and five. Cotton hands it off to O'Donnell. O'Donnell has the first down and more inside the 10 to the two. You see the power of Fred O'Donnell. O'Donnell is just getting stronger as this game's going on. It's just the second quarter, but he's starting to finish these runs, starting to lower the pad level, and starting to run over Bryant defenders, and North Little Rock going to burn another timeout. that leaves him with one with 11 seconds left, but you got a first and goal from the two, and this is what you wanted to do if you're North Little Rock. Get the ground game going. This is what you've done for the last four or five years. You've done it best. Now Eldridge comes in. They add a passing game, but those guys know how to run the football, and they're starting to go downhill, and Bryant's defenders are starting to be put on skates just a little bit. they got to finish this drive off, though, with some points. And they have found something up the middle. That's the they third have. time we've seen O'Donnell go up the middle for a big play. Maybe something that they can hold their hat for the second half. Bryant's size on the interior of their defensive line, not nearly as big as North Little Rocks, and they're starting to take advantage of that weight advantage there in the interior. So we've got 11 seconds to go. North Little Rock is on the two. Looking for their first points of the game. It's the O'Donnell and a running back behind Cotton. They'll hand it off to O'Donnell. Touchdown, North Little Rock. O'Donnell playing fullback. They handed the ball off to him. First man through. Had a big hole over the right guard, right tackle. And North Little Rock is on the board. That's uh, visions of old school football. Just line up in the eye. Hand it to your fullback. The first man through. And North Little Rock gets their first points of the board just before the half. And how big, Wes, is that drive right there? Confidence, momentum, everything you could possibly ask for in one drive of football. North Little Rock just got it. Well, we have a game now. Correct. Uh, it was 20 to nothing. Thing. And if North Little Rock is unable to score, or if they give the ball back to Bryant and Bryant scores, we could have seen a 27 to nothing right. game at the half. Instead, North Little Rock drives a length of the field, riding the legs, the strength, the power of Fred O'Donnell, and they get on the board. It is 20 to 7 with eight seconds to go. 
Big time drive from North Little Rock. He's now eight yards away from 900 on the season, season, but more importantly, touchdown run number 11 there for O'Donnell, and he has breathed a huge sigh of relief and a big gasp of life for that far sideline. And starting to see the fans kind of pack in a little more, right? A kickoff is a little sparse. Of course, we don't know what the line situation's out like there. And we knew it wasn't going to be the 18,000 that we got last year when these two kicked off. I believe that was the Saturday night game last year. Uh, but. I've slept since then, so I could not tell you when they played. If it was night, Friday, Saturday, uh, but I do remember they played last year. The attendance was a little over 18,000. This year, the attendance capped at 18,000, 9,000 from each school. And of course, you could go on the Triple H website just like you can for all the games, whether it's tonight or next weekend for the 5A game. Pulaski Academy and Little Rock Christian will kick off at 12 o'clock or 12:10 to be exact. And then the 2A state championship game between Desarc. And Fordyce looking go, go, to go back to back will kick off tomorrow uh, next weekend at 6:30. North Little Rock kicking off. Good long kick. Bryant fields it, fumbles it at inside their 10 yard line. Not a lot of room to run, so the Hornets will be brought down about the 18 yard line. And that's the end of the first half. Last second ticks off, and Bryant will take a 20 to 7 lead to halftime. Let's go down to the field. Check in with Hayden Balgavi. Well, Coach North Little Rock scores it. Coach North Little Rock scores a touchdown in those last few seconds. What do you tell your defense going into halftime? Well, we're going to have to play tougher. I mean, those guys sat up there and ran over, ran over us. And, you know, we knew they had great players. We knew they could run the football. You know, we, uh, they got to throw them in a bunch, and we just didn't stop the run there. But we're going to have to adjust. I'm going to tell them to come back and hit them in the mouth. Same time, Malachi, that big interception to set up the touchdown. What do you see from your defense? Well, defense has played good. You know, we just didn't play. We played soft there at the end, but we'll fix that. And, you know, we got to keep scoring on the offense, and the offense will take care of our defense. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Good luck in the second half. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, Hayden. Bryant goes into the locker room, leading 20-7. to 7. Stick around. Your halftime entertainment is coming up next. You're watching the state football championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. to the Arkansas PBS Sports Halftime Show. Today, we're covering both the 7A and 6A football state finals. I'm your host, David Basel, here at the beautiful Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. We'll get you back to the field soon, but as the players head for the locker rooms and we gear up for a few weeks of football finals, I'm eager to hear from one of the most seasoned voices in Arkansas sports. I'd like to welcome my friend, longtime journalist and Arkansas sportscaster, Rex Nelson. You may recognize Rex from his weekly sports show, Arkansas Scoreboard on KARN in Little Rock, or his recurring column for the Democrat Gazette. Rex Thanks for being here today, buddy. David, thanks for having me. It's great to be with you. This is always a special time of the year. You've been covering high school football for a long time, but this time, state championships at War Memorial are always special. Oh, I love state championship weekends. You know, I always set aside those first few weekends in December so I can watch all of the state championship games. It's just been part of my life, my entire life. I, You know, in the 1970s, I grew up in Arkadelphia, and they played in three state championship games in the decade of the 70s and it was interesting the progression for me the first one I watched as a kid from the stands the second one I played in and the third I did on the radio play by play that? so That's awesome. uh, it's been a part of my life since I was a young child and talk about the importance of, of high school football this season with the pandemic and how important it is in these small communities especially it, it's never been more important uh, during the pandemic I know it's been difficult but thank goodness we've had this high school football ties us together. It brings communities together. It is just such an important part of our culture in Arkansas. And David, we've all had to give up so much in 2020. Hats off to the administrators, hats off to the coaches, and hats off to these players for making it somehow work in a year that none of us will ever forget. 
And how special could it be for all these kids to go through all this and then end their season at War Memorial? Yeah, nothing like it. I, I mean, War Memorial is such an icon. It's one of the most special places in my life. So many of us who grew up in Arkansas have memories of this place. And win or lose the memories of playing in a state championship game at War Memorial Stadium, something that every player involved on both sides will remember until the day they die. You know, you are the voice of OBU, but all, you also do the Arkansas scoreboard uh, on Friday nights. And how many years you've been doing that now? Oh, 20 or more. Uh, you know, it's just part of my Friday nights. The thing about it is, though, because I'm doing that show every Friday night, I'm in a studio, so I don't actually see that many games. So that's why I always set aside early December to try to actually go to all six state championship games because I'm through with the scoreboard by then and I can actually attend games at that point. Yeah, Rex, uh, real quickly I know this is a year like no, no other and the fact that you've had a lot of special years to cover high school football what was it like for you to be able to cover high school football this season no oh, it, it was it was a return to at least something like normalcy uh, there wasn't much that was normal in my life and that goes for all of us since I can remember the day March the 12th was the last time I did a speaking event somewhere yeah. the last time I was on the road to speak to a group the England Chamber of Commerce so at least getting in that studio and talking to people all over the state, our correspondents who have become friends of mine, that was at least a little touch of normalcy in what otherwise was a very abnormal year. Well, Rex, you are an Arkansas treasure, my friend, and I'm proud to call you my friend, and I uh, look forward to calling many more high school football seasons with you over the years. Yeah, we got a lot more ahead. Hopefully, we're going to be back to normal in 2021, and you and I can actually be out there, be a part of it more than we've been been this year in the year of the virus. Thanks for talking with us. Thanks, Rick. David. We appreciate that. You know, we've seen just about everything a football season can throw at our student athletes. Nevertheless, 2020 has been a trying year for many Arkansas families and communities. But the story of Reed Hughes exemplifies how family, football, and community can lift us through the most difficult of times. It's a unique feeling. There's no other wampus cat in the world. A six-legged blue cat, you don't get that very often. They fight their guts out every snap. So you can set goals of winning five or six games, but there's no sense in all that. Your goal is going to be to win it all. Well, it's great having him as a coach, and you know, he's really good at splitting it between home and the field. So if he's mad at me in the field, he's good at not carrying it all the way home and getting mad at me at home. But there's those times that you can tell he's yelling at you as dad and not coach, and those are the scary ones. It's fun. It's fun dealing with him. But sometimes it's a challenge because you got to balance that dad and son aspect of life. But um, my wife always told me when I got home, you stop. That's it. You let it go. So I did, and I do. She was the biggest fan I've ever had. You know, she was the biggest supporter and just the most inspirational person I had in my life. And she kept me pushing through whatever I had. And uh, she gave me strength that I can't even describe. <sighs> He's so strong. He spoke at FCA out here on the Field of Faith night. And he spoke about his mom, about the fight and the battle. And no matter what's going on in your life, you know, you've. You've got God there to fall back onto, to help you, to pick you up. You know, he told the story a year ago to the day. She was sitting in the stands, sick, not feeling good, wrapped up in a blanket, and that's just the way she is. Well, she was always gonna be there for whatever they did, any kid did. She never missed a thing, sick or not. My daughter, she's an extremely strong human being. When my wife was diagnosed with cancer, she was at Arkansas State. Then when we figured out we gotta get some treatments, Haley had come to us and said she had already changed she was going to UCA, she'd already fixed her scholarship, she'd already taken care of everything over that Christmas break to get to here, to be home, to help. Well, it's been hard. Um, 
Well, for 25 years of coaching, when the game's over, I turn around and she's walking on the field to see me. That smile, win, lose, or draw. She had that smile to come hug me and give me a kiss. But she was the most encouraging person around us. Well, right before she passed, she told me, uh, go hit someone hard. And uh, that's, that's what I've tried to do. So we started the uh, Arkansas Tackles Cancer. And so for every tackle that I get on the field, um, there's donations made by sponsors towards cancer research in Arkansas. I'm the upwards of 100. So I think, I think there's been a lot of donations. That's been amazing. As you may remember, this story was captured last season. Coach Hughes is now the assistant athletic director for the Conway Wampus Cats. His daughter Haley, she works as a special education teacher for the Bigelow School District. And Reed, he's at the next level playing the game he loves with the Auburn Tigers. We wish Reed and his family all the best. The Bryant Hornets have been a force to be reckoned with in Arkansas football for the past few years and are the current defending 7A champions. Quarterback Austin Ledbetter has been a huge part of that success. Let's check in with R.J. Hawk as he chats with Austin. Thanks, David. Austin Ledbetter joins us here at halftime. And Austin, I tell you what, man, I, I've got to cover you now for a few years. And uh, what an impressive run the Bryant Hornets have made during your time uh, on the football team. Before we get into that, I know it's been kind of a crazy year with COVID. And I, I know that you guys had to miss a game earlier this year. But what's it been like each week preparing for the football season with the pandemic going on? Uh, we just got to take it, uh, you know, each rep at a time, each game, you know, each day. You know, you never know when it's going to end. So, you know, we have to just keep getting better every day. Like we're going to, you know, finish the season off, you know. And, um, you know, it, it feels real good that we've made it this far, uh, conference champions. And, um, you know, um, it's it's a blessing to keep to keep going. Okay, I want to move away from the football field. It, it has something to do with football a little bit, but it's been widely publicized and, and talked about, about your relationship uh, with nine-year-old, is it Austin Tebow? Is that is that how you say mm -hmm. his last name? Yeah, yes, I mean, what a remarkable story that is. He's a, a nine-year-old that, that has autism, and you've really just developed a relationship and kind of taken him under your wing. Just talk about that relationship, and for somebody that hasn't seen or hasn't heard uh, how did that come about, and, and, and what is your relationship with him? Uh, he he started coming to my games, and, um, you know, he was showing me a lot of support. So, I mean, I took that support, and I went to one of his games, and, you know, we just kind of bonded and uh, start, formed a friendship, and he comes to every single one of my games. Uh, I went to one of his games this year, and, uh, you know, we just have a strong bond, and, uh, you know, it's – I like to see that type type of support. So I'm, if he's going to show me that type of support, I'm going to show it back to him. Okay. We're going to have some fun here in just a second. I want to ask you real quick. You've already committed to be uh, with the Razorback baseball team. Uh, I, I think it, really when people hear that, they're like, yay, the Omaha, you know, Omaha Hogs, hey, we're going to have another great baseball player. But they've also seen your football talents. And mm -hmm. I, I know football, you want to play collegiately, right? Yes, sir. So the, the Razorbacks, uh, I mean, that's, that's almost a pinnacle if you live in Arkansas to, to have that opportunity to at least, you know, be in the athletic department. What's that mean that when Dave Van Horn gave you that phone call and said, hey, we want you to be a hog? Uh, it meant a lot. You know, as soon as he gave me that call, you know, I knew where I wanted to go to school. Um, you know, it's every dream. It's every kid's dream to go play for the Razorbacks. Um, you know, their, their baseball team is phenomenal. Their program is great. Their facilities are second to none. And, uh, you know, it's truly a blessing to, you know, get that phone call and being able to go play for the Razorbacks. Dennis. Well, Austin, man, hey, thanks so much for joining us. And best of luck, uh, where, whatever you end up may do. I know you're going to be playing baseball, but uh, the rest of the way, best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. He is Austin Ledbetter. Basil, we got a good one right here in the state of Arkansas. Back to you at the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. That's some super talent right there. Hey, to keep up with what's happening during the championship games and on Arkansas PBS, log on to our new Engage app. You can download the app at the App Store and Google Play.
And that's it for the Halftime Show. I'm David Basil. Let's get you back to the action at War Memorial for the second half of the 7A championship game on the home of the high school state finals, Arkansas PBS. Halftime of the 7A state championship game. Bryant leads North Little Rock 20 to 7. Big drive from the Charger Wildcats to end the half. Give them a little momentum. That locker room's a, a little more pleasant for the yeah. North Little Rock Charger Wildcats. Yeah, they put the, the football in his hands and the momentum of the team on his shoulders, and Fred O'Donnell took advantage. He just carried North Little Rock down the field on that last drive for the Charging Wildcats and looked the part. Looks like a 1,000-yard rusher, which he expects to be, but maybe by the time this game is over. But that was a big drive for, I mentioned it before the half, for all the momentum reasons, for all the psyche reasons, whatever the case may be. And you said, now we got a game. Well, Fred O'Donnell came into the uh, game with 819 yards rushing at the half. He uh, leads North Little Rock in uh, rushing with 73 yards, so that puts him around doing the quick math around what 892 yep he may need to get to a thousand yeah. yards on the season get have about a hundred yards rushing in the second half for North Little Rock to come back but you see uh, O'Donnell running number 11 powerful strong a converted tight end uh, heck of a tight end but they saw that he was uh, uh, able to run the ball you see the first Bad mistake from North Little Rock with Bryant with the turnover there. Did not result in into any points for the Hornets. They drove down into inside the red zone but did not score. Here's a look at your first half stats. Total yards pretty even. The, the interceptions, that's the key, really. Well, that's why the Hornets have a... Uh, 13 point lead at the half. Yeah, turnovers are so turnovers are so critical, especially how they result in the second one results in an interception run back all the way inside the 10 that set up the third score for Bryant. You take away those two interceptions, this game is is like you said dead even. The rushing yards, you're probably going to need about 150 in the second half if you're North Little Rock to really have a legitimate chance of coming back and beating this really really good Bryant football team get something to go your way maybe a turnover goes the other direction but Austin Ledbetter has been really good seven of nine passing in that first half and Brian has done a really good job defensively of slowing down Kareem Cotton he has six carries for 20 yards and Cotton is a threat a dual threat he can run it he can throw it passing wise he's six of 13 but those two interceptions have been costly for North Little Rock we heard from Buck James as he was going into the half I know Coach James pretty well. He was upset with that last drive. There's no reason. He he prides himself on having a strong, powerful, tough defense, mm -hmm. and that's not what we saw that last drive from yeah. Bryant. That's what we were used to seeing North Little Rock do to everybody, mm -hmm. and Bryant's not everybody, and I want a lot of people to know that, that 29 straight wins, the state's largest of a classification, doesn't happen, but when they were able to just move the football up and down the field, North Little Rock ran it down Bryant's throat. That doesn't happen, and even though they've got a 13-point lead, that's not going to sit well with Coach Buck James. We have about four minutes and 20 seconds left in the half. We got a couple of the specialists out on the field trying to loosen up. We'll have both of the teams uh, entering the field here in a few minutes. For Bryant, the leading rusher was Tanner Anderson. Six carries for 38 yards. He also had Austin Ledbetter. We got to see Ledbetter scramble around a little bit mm -hmm. when North Little Rock was dropping eight. That's right. Rushing three, and he took advantage. Yeah, that's one thing that North Little Rock was content with doing. Like, so Austin Ledbetter, you've thrown for almost 3,000 yards this year. We're going to drop eight, make you beat us. Arkansas at the college level has done that a lot this year. Drop eight guys into coverage. Okay, you're going to have to beat us running the football, and that's what North Little Rock wanted to do early. The quarterback took advantage. Jamari and Bracey, we cannot leave him out. He's only had five carries, 21 yards, but he had two big touchdown runs for Bryant. Yeah, we're talking about how O'Donnell finishes runs. These two running backs for Bryant know how to punish defenders who are trying to tackle them. Got to give North Little Rock's defense some credit for bottling up Hayden Schrader. He was the leading receiver yeah. for Bryant, and we know that's Ledbetter's go-to guy. Just two catches yeah. for 27 yards. Yeah, they've done a really nice job, and one of those catches, he was double teamed. It was really nice coverage in the middle of the field. Just a perfect pass by Ledbetter. So really the game plan has been executed almost flawlessly for North Little Rock, but it all comes back to those turns 
turnovers, those miscues, which you cannot have against a team as good as Bryant's, especially in a stage like this, has cost North Little Rock up to this point. Well, North Little Rock's defense did a good job after the first turnover. Bryant did not get any points, but that second turnover, and Bryant was able to return it inside the 10-yard line, set up a short field, and they scored on the first play on the rushing touchdown. That's, that's really the difference right now. You take away that one play, that one yeah. turnover, and it would be a one-possession game right yeah, now. Yeah, that's exactly what you expected to be last year. The two games were really close. Two years ago, both teams won a game. Obviously, Bryant won the state championship game, the rubber match, which avenged the regular season loss. Bryant's last loss, by the way, was say this North Little Rock team. So North Little Rock is not going to be intimidated by all the numbers. You're talking about 500 total yards of offense per game, 50 points per game that Bryant puts up. 20 in the first half, still, that's a big number, but it's nowhere near what they're used to scoring because Bryant's probably put up 50 points in the first half a lot of times this year. No doubt about it. Uh, if you were to ask some North Little Rock fans, not the coaching staff, but the North Little Rock fans, if you can hold Bryant to 20 in the first half, mm -hmm. some of them would have signed up for that yeah. because you, you know it's going to be a pretty manageable game going into the second half. Now the Hornets will receive the second half kickoff, so this will be a very important drive for that North Little Rock defense yeah. to try to force a punt. And it's also it's the chess match. Okay, what adjustments have you made at halftime? If North Little Rock drops eight and says, let better beat us with your legs, well, Bryant's not ready for that. They've seen it for two full quarters. you got to see something different. got to give those players on the field some different window dressing, if you will. you got to give them something they, they haven't seen, they're not ready for, they have had the entire half to adjust for that the game within the game that chess match if you will is going to be the key on this opening drive on both sides to start this third quarter both teams are entering the field right now coming out of the locker room starting to, to get stretched out I want to take a, a few minutes to let one of our partners know we're thinking about him Scott Inman cannot be with us this weekend and Scott has been a part of the team for years now Scott is with his wife, Nicole Inman, and we want Ed Scott to know that we miss him, and we want him to know that our thoughts and prayers are with him and Nicole and the entire family, and uh, we just want you to know, Scott, we miss you and can't wait to have you back in the booth with us. And if Scott was here at day one when we launched the state championship games, and obviously our thoughts and prayers are with the Inman family as they're going through a tough time. That's a state championship winning coach right there, too, so who's, in a, who's in a battle. She knows how to win, and hopefully she can win another one. 20 seconds to go before the second half kickoff. North Little Rock needs to make up 13 points to win a state championship. They've done it before. As you mentioned, knocking off Bentonville several years ago. Bryant looking for their third straight title. Bryant, to get here, knocked off Conway last week, 56-14. to 14. They beat Harbor in the second round of the playoffs, 48-22. to 22. And in the first round against Rogers Heritage, 34-7. to 7. This year, and not only in all 7A Central finals for the third straight year, but also... It was an all 7A Central semifinals. The last four teams standing were all from the 7A Central. Being here in Little Rock, we had talked to a lot of coaches who were very impressed with what they were seeing out of 7A Central in the non-conference and leading up to uh, conference play. And then we saw it in the playoffs. Cabot with Scott yeah. Reed. Uh, just a, a heck of a year for them pushing North Little Rock to the brink. And Conway and the Wampus Cats, a great offense. They were fun to watch this year, and they made it also to the semifinals. So bragging rights this year for the 7A Central uh, getting four teams. And to the, the, the first half, or mainly really the last decade and, and a half, it was all about Northwest Arkansas, all about the west side of the state. As, you know, But Bentonville, who everybody thought was going to be the one team that could maybe challenge Bryant, Cabot goes on the road, overcomes a 10-point deficit in the second half and gets the win. So obviously a lot of kudos goes to that Central Conference. Tonight, we'll have the 6A state championship. And it's not a rematch from last year, but it's a rematch from earlier this year with Lake Hamilton and Greenwood. Let's go down to the field and check in with Hayden. Aldridge here in just a second. He's speaking about which way he's going to kick the ball to start the second half. We're going to get a quick question in right now to talk about the North Little Rock. Coach, you scored a very important touchdown with Fred O'Donnell right before the half ended. How big was that touchdown? Oh, it's huge. Uh, you know, I, I feel like we, we needed that score going into halftime. Uh, so it's big for our offense. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Guys, big momentum shift for North Little Rock. Let's see if they can carry it into the second half. 
They've added a little time on the clock to let the teams warm up. And they uh, put another couple of minutes, so we're about still about a minute and 10 seconds away. North Little Rock got to the state championship game by beating Cabot at home 49-42. to We talked about Kareem Cotton and the big plays he made down the stretch to help North Little Rock to this state championship game. North Little Rock beat Catholic 30 second round of the playoffs and they shut out Southside 38 to nothing. That was one of the differences I saw this year with North Little Rock and we saw that at Arkadelphia with J.R. Eldridge. His teams were fun, explosive to watch, but their defense, their defense was very very good at Arkadelphia and this year North Little Rock's defense uh, we saw improvement throughout the year and you, you see it in the playoffs shutting out Southside, allowing Catholic only seven points and you know what? They've done a decent job defensively in the first half against Bryant. Yeah, and that Southside win, you, you maybe look at the, the Mavericks record all season and think of that, not a lot of that, but Southside, the second half of the season was playing really well, scoring a lot of points in the Western Conference. And so to shut out Southside really gave them that momentum. And, and once the ball got rolling, and obviously we knew they could score points, but you mentioned that defense played lights out in the playoffs, and that's what matters. And they're going to need another 24 minutes of it here. And maybe, just maybe, they can pull off one of the bigger upsets we've seen in the last five, 10, maybe 15 years in Arkansas high school football. Here come the Charger Wildcats out to kick it off for the second half. You know, North Little Rock rushed three and dropped eight a lot mm -hmm. in the first half. Do you think we'll see more of that in the second half, or do you, do you expect them to change it up and maybe put a little pressure on Ledbetter? I, I think they're, they're trying to pick their poison a little bit. Uh, 20 points and a half is okay. You give up 20 points in the second half, you're probably not going to have enough bullets to come back and win this football game. So I'd expect to see a little pressure, a different look for Austin Ledbetter, maybe bring some unconventional blitzes from different angles. Just change the eye angle uh, a little bit of Ledbetter and try to create something with your defense. Good kick from North Little Rock. Drives the Hornet receiver all the way to the one-yard line. And look at the coverage for North Little Rock. Bryant will start on their own 11. Great job by North Little Rock special teams. The kick right shy of the goal line, which is essentially how you'd love to draw it up if you could do it every time. And the coverage team does a nice job of bottling up the return unit. And now Bryant, who's got their first possession of the second half, has got a long way to go to pay dirt. Corey Nichols returned that kickoff. And we've already seen the explosiveness from Corey Nichols. And he had nowhere to go that time because of North Little Rock's coverage unit. So Ledbetter and company will come out with the ball on the 11-yard line, 89 yards to go on their first drive. Worst field position by far for the Hornets. Well, we talked about what North Little Rock has to do. If you're Bryant, more of the same, but look for 84 Schrader, see if he can get something going. Three receivers to his left, but he's going to hand it off to Anderson. Anderson gets to the right side. He's to the sideline. First down and more. Anderson is dragged out at about the 28-yard line. Just a simple counter play there, just outnumbered North Little Rock, get him flow on one side and go the other, and Anderson picks up a big first down, and Bryant's already on the move. Schrader goes up to the top of the your screen. Ledbetter's motioning. He wants Nichols a little bit closer to him. Ledbetter hands it off. It's Anderson again. Bick gets a big block, picks up a first down. He's got the ball to the 44-yard line. Two carries for Anderson, and they move from the 11 to the 44. Yeah, 33 quick yards. Anderson now over 1,000 yards on the season. And if you're only going to go with three down linemen, North Little Rock, that is, Bryant's going to challenge you. We're just going to run right at you and maybe look to see North Little Rock put in a couple extra bodies in the box because right now they've just got six in there, and that's an advantage for Bryant. Anderson to Ledbetter's right. He's going to hand it off again. This time he picks up about three and a half. It's a light box for, for North Little Rock, and I say it by the box between the tackles with about five yards of the football. North Little Rock got some wholesale changes on defense. Sticking with the three down linemen, we'll have to see what they do with their linebackers as far as moving them in and out of the middle of that field. Second and seven. Ball marked at the 48-yard line. Hornets with four wide receivers. Anderson to Ledbetter's right. Ledbetter pulls it back. He's throwing just over the outreach fingertips of his receiver. 
It's Clay Curtis, the intended target there. Had him open for just a tick, but then a nice job by the North Little Rock safety to get over the top. Arkansas PBS offers all the football games and more on demand starting next week. Let's go to youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Third down for the Hornets. Closing speed there we saw, Wes, of this North Little Rock secondary. Receivers are open. That window closes in a hurry. Trips to the left. One receiver to the right. Ledbetter hands it off to Anderson. Anderson with blockers. Anderson across midfield. He's brought down short. It's going to be about fourth and one. Now real decision time. A couple early, they're no-brainers you're going to go for, but fourth and one just across midfield. This is a big spot for the Bryant offense, big spot for the North Little Rock defense, but as long as he's on the field, I expect number nine, Tanner Anderson, to get the football. Bryant looks like they're going for it. Plays being called in. Fourth and about half a yard. Ledbetter with the snap. Anderson right up the middle. He's got the first. No, oh, it's, it's a bad on spot. The spot. Yeah. I thought he had it. The official running in. If he marks it, he doesn't have it. If the official on the bottom marks it, he's got it. This is close. Yeah. Where he hit the ground, it looked like he had it, but he didn't. It's a big stop for North Little Rock, and what we're going to have to see on the replay is where the football was when his knee hit the ground. Of course, can't challenge plays in the state championship game, so we'll have to kind of wait and see if there's a good angle on a replay, but as it stands right now, that is a big, big play for North Little Rock's defense, and they needed that, and now the momentum continues to roll their direction. We'll see if the offense can take advantage of it. Coaches can only challenge turnovers and scoring plays. So can't challenge it. So the flag on me. North Little Rock takes over. Cotton hands it off to O'Donnell. O'Donnell picking his hole. He's still on his feet. He picks up a first down. I thought O'Donnell was going down twice. Somehow stayed on his feet. And look at that North Little Rock sideline. Yeah, North Little Rock starting to feel it. The running game starting to work. Well, we've got a Bryant player down behind the play. That's big number 99, the big defensive tackle. We're going to have to stoppage in play here, but North Little Rock's got the momentum, and O'Donnell is just getting stronger and stronger every time he hands the football. The Bryant fans are right below us. The North Little Rock fans are on the opposite side, and I can hear them right now. They uh, have a little momentum. They're excited. The Bryant fans, they're cheering as uh, Big 99 comes off the field, but right now momentum on the other side of the stadium. That's Xander Gulledge. 5'8", 170, sophomore, if that's correct on the, no, excuse me, that's, that's Jamal Harris, 6'2", 245, according to the roster. North Little Rock first and 10, ball in the Bryant, 42. Cotton hands it off again. Powerful running from O'Donnell, not a whole lot there, but he still gets six yards on the play. Yeah, the way he finishes runs is what you show kids in elementary and junior high. This is how you play the running back position. You just lower your pads, and fight for extra yardage. And keep those legs moving. And and he falls forward every time. If you notice, when he falls, and he's a bigger back, he falls down and picks up another yard. The big heavy, heavy dose of number 11 in the second half. Second and four, O'Donnell. Nope, Cotton keeps it, goes over the right side, picks up two. The hole was there for Cotton, but it closed quickly. Nice job by Bryant. To, see the play action fake and and co collapse on the quarterback Kobe Melton one of the guys there to stack him up third and a long two for North Little Rock I got to believe this is two down territory at the Bryant 34 and I don't, I don't think it's going to take a, a John Madden type to think that number 11 is going to get his hands on the football in one of these two plays there he is on the first play, and he picks up the first down. Official running in is going to give him the spot. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to go in this third quarter. Big drive for North Little Rock. Chance to make this a one-possession game. They're going to stop the clock, and looks like they're going to bring the chains in. Official's timeout. 
for a measurement. I may have spoken too quickly, but when he was running in, it, it appeared he had enough for the first down. They are going to measure it. Well, we've got a quick second immediately following this game. Stay tuned for Urban Forge, o Ozark Artistry. The original Arkansas PBS film showcases the creativity, skill, and tradition of blacksmith artisans in Mountain View, Arkansas. Home of the Yellow Jackets. Looks like it's going to be a couple of inches short, maybe about five inches short. So it's fourth down for North Little Rock. We just saw Bryant unable to convert on a big fourth down play. We'll see if the Hornets defense can do what the North Little Rock defense just did. Yeah, we've seen them run it once already today. I expect Kareem Cotton to get under center and, and lean forward and maybe have his running back O'Donnell get behind him and give him a nudge forward. 15 years ago, that was called aiding the runner. Anymore, they don't call that. Is that Michigan? Was that Michigan that yeah. started that? Yeah. Or it Notre was. Dame? It was Notre Dame. Dame. Uh, yeah, so it was Reggie Bush against Notre Dame. He threw Matt Leonard into the end zone. You're correct. I think you've called the play. Cotton under center. And he does exactly that. Just eases forward, picks up about two yards on the play. Nice wrinkle to it. He gets out after the hard count, acts like he's going to look to the sideline and quickly snapped it. I can say this because as a player who's been called for an aiding the runner penalty in their career. <laughs> uh, back in 1998, small town America. Legal now. Yeah. Not in Hevener, Arkansas, Hevener, Oklahoma, it's not. I promise you that. <laughs> I think that's a good rule change, though. Yeah, well, I mean, I might have literally grabbed and threw someone in the end zone. <laughs> There's a difference between pushing them. Did he get in? He that's did. all that matters. He got, he got well in. Cotton keeps it, takes it away from O'Donnell, and Cotton, we see the big, big speed from him. First time we've seen that really all game. Cotton picks up another first down for North Little Rock. Yeah, that's where the, the O'Donnell running game is going to start to open things up for his quarterback. The eyes are starting to go to number 11 and lose a little discipline. The quarterback keeps it. There's O'Donnell, and O'Donnell's got nothing but green space. Touchdown, North Little Rock. That is a big, big sequence of plays for the charging Wildcats. Your defense comes up with a stop and just methodically marching the football down the field, trusting your running back, trusting your offensive line. And North Little Rock all of a sudden is within striking distance of Bryant's when we thought this game was going to get out of control late in that second quarter. We've had one extra point missed earlier today by the Hornets. That's why they have 20 points. So North Little Rock with a very important extra point. Good snap, good hold, kick is good. North Little Rock within six. It is 20 to 14. You are watching the 7A State Football Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Ship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Welcome back to the 7A state championship game, and we have a ball game. North Little Rock scores. It's 20 to 14, the Bryant Hornets lead. North Little Rock getting set to kick off. And they've been kicking it deep. Good leg from the kicker. And it's another high, deep kickoff. Nichols fields it at the four. Nichols up the middle to about the 20-yard line. Let's go down the sideline and check in with Hayden. 
Hey, Wes, you know, we got to catch up with Coach Eldridge just before the second half started. He couldn't have dreamed of a better start. You get a stop right there, and then Fred O'Donnell has taken over this ballgame. And he looks big up there, I'm sure, on camera. Folks, you should stand next to him. The man is a monster. Again, North Little Rock right back in this ballgame. Bryant fans, we're on the Bryant sideline trying to get him fired up. We'll see if Austin Ledbetter can do something on this drive. We have some big backs in this game. We do. With O'Donnell and yeah. Tanner Anderson and Bracey. 15 carries, 106 yards for O'Donnell, two touchdowns. And we're talking about big backs. We're about to see a couple more for Bryant here as they try to respond. Ledbetter in shotgun, three receivers to his left. He's got a running back to his left. He's going to hand it to that big back. Gets it out to about the 25-yard line. Gain of about three, maybe four. This, this is where we're going to see what Bryant's made of. They're a really good football team. Nobody questions that. But the last time they were really pushed was the non-conference season, all the way back in week three. We saw that almost probably did cost Bentonville a game in the quarterfinals. They weren't tested at all in conference play. They get to a playoff, a tough matchup against Cabot. They didn't respond like they needed to in the second half. Now we're going to have to see what Bryant needs to do when they adjust in the second half. You know, Trendy Christian uh, was that game you're talking about. Bryant had a nice lead, and then Trendy Christian came back, retook the lead, and Bryant came back and got the lead back. There's a pass over the middle, complete. Corey Nichols with the big play, first down for Bryant. That's a nice design play there for Bryant. Nichols was covered, and all of a sudden he gets a little depth behind the linebackers, gets a wide open space, and Ledbetter able to hit his receiver for a big first down. Middle of the field was wide open for the Hornets that time. Bracey in the backfield on this drive. Ledbetter's going to give it to Bracey. Nothing there. Bracey stopped for a gain of one. Tried to get the counter play. They've had some sex success with that on both sides of the line, but that time North Little Rock shuts it down at the point of attack and keeps it to a minimal gain. 15 there for North Little Rock. He looks like he's been spent. Deontay Young, sophomore linebacker, but you talk about big, 6'3", 250. I got a thumper in there in the middle of the defense. Bracey moves over to the left of Ledbetter. He's going out for a pass. Ledbetter's looking to throw. He's got room to run. Ledbetter gets almost to midfield. They'll mark him down at the 49-yard line. That's a gain of seven. It's a nice job by North Little Rock's coverage to force Ledbetter to tuck it and run. The defensive line collapsed. Not before he's able to pick up about six yards and set up a third and short. Third and three, the ball's on the Bryant 49. They need to get it just past the North Little Rock 48 for a first down. It'll be third and three. This is a big play for Bryant's offense. They need to stay on the field, give their defense a rest. And they need to get the momentum back. They do. Clearly, momentum's on North Little Rock's side. High school football, high school sports, all sports, momentum's such a big thing. There's Bracey, he's got the first down. Anytime they need a couple yards or a big play in the running game, Bryant's been content with running behind the left side of that offensive line. Big 54s on that side, 73. 73, Jason Shiflett. You almost heard a sigh of relief from the Bryant fans yeah. below us after they picked up that first down. Yeah, Will Diggins, the big left tackle. Bracey still in the game. He's to the right of Ledbetter. Ledbetter's going to run it. Ledbetter looking, trying to find something, nothing there. That's what you don't want if you're Bryant. You don't want your quarterback running horizontally. You want him going north and south, not sideline to sideline. That's not a, a recipe for success if you're the Hornets. You can gather the family for a must-see Christmas classic. A Charlie Brown Christmas is going to be Sunday, December 13th at 6.30 on Arkansas PBS. Second and 10. No gain for Ledbetter. North Little Rock with the three down lineman. They've been content with that pretty much the whole game. Ledbetter looking to pass. Quick pass out to his right. That's to Nichols, but Nichols quickly brought down. You've got to be careful there. It's a nice play by Marion Williams, but you know, I like the play. I like the confidence. You can't stand over an offensive player and I'm not going to say taunted him, but official could see that as taunting, but didn't get called for it there. Great play, though, in the flat. Picks up about three yards. Short game for Bryant. Third and seven. 
Ball is marked at the 44. An empty backfield. They need to get to about the 37-yard line of North Little Rock. Led better time to throw. Looking, looking, going deep. Has a receiver there. Just not brought in. That was Schrader. He was going to his main target inside the 10-yard line and just not able to bring it down. Pretty good coverage there by North Little Rock on the corner route. Just a, the ball hung up just a little bit in the air. Not a lot of wind here at War Memorial, but held up just enough. Gave North Little Rock's two defenders time to close on it. And maybe just was this the second punt of the game total we spoke with uh, buck james earlier this week and he said one of the big things they had to adjust to was playing a day game yeah they're, they're not used to the sun and, and trying to find the ball in, in the sun during the daytime and in a big stadium sometimes it's hard to find and catch that ball blind drive kick fielded by north little rock at the 15 yard line but bryant's quickly there to make the tackle north little rock had a player get off the sideline late there but no call so the charging wildcats get possession and i'm not sure we would have thought this in the first half but charging wildcats have the football and a chance to take the lead i was just about to ask you bobby did you think there would be a time earlier in this game that we could say north little rock has the ball with a chance to take the lead but you answered my question there i would have said no Bryant had all the momentum. It looked like they were ready to run away with things. It was 20 to nothing, but North Little Rock has scored 14 straight points. We talked about that last drive to end the first half and how big it was. That momentum going into the locker room. Well, that momentum has carried over into the second half. Bryant's had two possessions, no scores. North Little Rock, one possession, one touchdown. Here's their second possession. They're looking to take the lead. Cotton yeah. keeps it up the middle. Short game for him. They're not going to be in any hurry. They've had success running the football. March right down the field without attempting a pass on their last drive. We're going to see a lot of four Kareem Cotton, a lot of 11 Fred O'Donnell, and rely on those big guys up front to make something happen. Now you mentioned North Little Rock not getting in a hurry. Bryant can't score when their offense is over here on the sideline. Cotton in shotgun. He's got O'Donnell to his right. He's going to keep it. Fires across the middle, and it is incomplete. Good defense from Bryant. So great coverage there by Kobe Melton, but it's a good throw on target. But Melton gets his hand in there and knocks, it, knocks the pass away. And there we say it, a critical third down, maybe on both sides. Third and five. Hornets defense looks over to their sideline, tells the crowd, let's get up, make some noise, and that's what they do. Cotton looking to pass, rolling to his right. Has a receiver, but overthrows him just a little bit. Had a step on Schroeder, the safety coming over the top on the corner route, but just could not connect, so that's a big stop for the Bryant defense, and they should get pretty good field position here. North Little Rock goes three and out. Punt team on the field. I like the idea of moving the pocket. You see the receiver open. Just could not connect with his target. Felix Wade on the flag route. Good punt from North Little Rock. Sends the returner back. He's going to let it bounce. Gets a North Little Rock bounce. And this is going to be a heck of a punt. Ball rolls to a stop at the Bryant 25. So that is going to be a 55-yard punt for North Little Rock. Talk about flipping the field. Yeah, that's what you needed for North Little Rock. And everything they're turning over right now is coming up aces. And now you got to rely on your defense one more time to, to get a big stop. If you're Bryant, this is when you've got to answer the bell. You haven't been challenged in two months. Your offense was clicking on all cylinders in that first half. Now you got to pick yourself back up and, and try to get back into it and it probably starts with the running game. We heard Sam Pittman talk last week about you got to catch the punt. We're, we're letting the ball <laughs> bounce and we're losing yardage. That was the case there for Bryant. Catch the punt and you don't let that roll go, the ball go and roll all that way. Quick handoff. Over the left side on the jet sweep, not much there. Tanner Anderson picks up about three. That's a way to get your running back involved in an unconventional formation to line him up in the slot position and send him in motion to hand him the football, but North Little Rock all over it after a pickup of about four. A little different formation that time. We had uh, Anderson and Bracey in the game. I haven't seen that many times today. Yeah, it's a new wrinkle that you like to see come out in these state title games. So you got Anderson to his left, Bracey to his right. 
North Little Rock didn't buy the fake. They were all over it. Goes over the left side. Nothing there. Yeah, it's you know, there's a lot of moving parts there. That's the simple cross block play. You remember the old split backs from the 70s and 80s, the two running backs go opposite directions. That's all that was. And North Little Rock's linebackers do a nice job of recognizing it and making the play right at the line of scrimmage. About a minute to go here in the third quarter. Bryant leads North Little Rock 20 to 14. Hornets with third and seven. North Little Rock players now looking to their sideline. They want their fans to get up on their feet and make some noise. North Little Rock trying to force a three and out, just like Bryant's defense forced a three and out. Ledbetter looking to pass. Finds a receiver on the sideline, and it is knocked out of his hands. North Little Rock's defender does a great job. Yeah, we've seen that a few times. It looks like a cover three. You have someone in the flats, you pass off the receiver, and you hope your safety can get over the top just in time. And there, the North Little Rock defender gets there just in time, knocks the football loose, and it looks like the charging Wildcats are going to get the football back after the big play by Davian Vason. Hornets punt, high, short punt, and it'll bounce, and it's a North Little Rock bounce. Bounces back across the 50. North Little Rock will take over on the Bryant 48. So we see special teams with a couple of big game-changing plays. North Little Rock gets the big punt to flip the field, and Bryant punt gets a bad bounce and comes the other way. Yeah, well, the Bryant sideline saying that ball touched the North Little Rock player as off the ricochet, but it doesn't look like they're going to get the call, even though they're lobbying pretty hard for it. See the replay on the big board here at War Memorial. I just saw it bounce and go back. It, whew, it came close to that North yeah. Little Rock player. You see the yeah, North Little Rock's the got the football. Well, yeah. this can be reviewed. And Brian just called timeout. It looks like we are going to get a review here. Yeah, turnovers can be reviewed, and this would be a potential turnover. This would be a big, big play. So if it happened, the ball happened to graze the North Little Rock player, it would be a live ball, and it was recovered by Bryant. And so we'll have to see. The replays are reviewed up here in the booth. You'll see the uh, head official come over to about the 20-yard line and talk with the guys. The previous play. Really love this, and, and I think it's a great idea for the AAA because it is being televised. You do have cameras. You can take a look. They're looking for obvious mistakes. They're not looking for little small mistakes that, right. you know, a yard here or a yard there. Uh, they're looking for game-changing plays, and this would be one of them. They can take a look at turnovers. They can take a look at all scoring plays. Now, coaches can challenge it uh, they, if they have a timeout. They've got one challenge per game if they have a timeout. If that challenge is correct and they win the challenge, they get that challenge back, so you can have more, but if it's challenged and you're wrong, that's your only challenge. Now, I think this came down from the booth. I don't think this was a Bryant challenge. Uh, the booth will uh, call or buzz down to yep. the officials if they see something that they need to take a look at. Yep. So it's, it's going to be a big call. Think back to, to the opening drive of last year's 4A state championship game. Shiloh Christian had a big pass down the sideline. They ruled him out about the eight. They went to review it. Actually resulted in a touchdown. And we got another look at it here. Just watch at the bounce. Ooh. It's going to be tough to tell from that angle. You know, I look at the reaction, and, and look, that's that's not a reason to overturn it or keep it. But you look at the reaction of thinking it was number eight for North Little Rock. He didn't go and chase down right. the ball like that touched him. He, he looked like he got out of the way, and it didn't touch him because he just stood there. Yeah, that's Felix Wade for North Little Rock, and I think you're exactly right. Anytime on the, the, the special teams unit, you know if the ball touches you, you got to jump on it. He didn't make the, the attempt to, to go track down the football, and if that's the only angle the replay crew has on it, I don't think there's any way they can turn that over. Look down at the booth and see if what they're doing right now right now I can't really tell <laughs> I do see some of the assistant coaches and they're all around the monitors looking intently trying to see if they see anything so how big is this call Wes I think we're about to get the call here but man momentum either way it's going to be critical that's Buck James that he's speaking with right now you'll be able to tell from Buck's reaction the, the big term here is going to be conclusive was the play conclusive? After further review, call on the field stands. 
it would be first down North Little Rock. Bryant will not be charged a timeout. So Bryant was, gets the timeout back, but they don't get the football. That, that's just saying that Bryant did not challenge it. They did not call for the review. That came from the booth. The booth buzzed down and said, hey, we need to take a look at this. Yeah, they, they called timeout to give the officials and they, uh, the, the replay crew a little more time to think about it, and they do get that timeout back. But now this is a big, big spot for the North Little Rock offense and the Bryant defense. Get the momentum. So North Little Rock starts the possession in Bryant territory. There's 31 seconds left in the third quarter. North Little Rock trails by six. Cotton in shotgun. He's got O'Donnell to his left. Here comes Jefferson. Hands it off to Jefferson on the fly sweep. Bryant strings it out. Good tackle by the Hornets. Nice job by Austin Troder. He's been all over the field. Got the interception early in the game. Comes up from his safety spot and shuts down Jefferson after a pickup of about three. Second and seven for North Little Rock. Looks like they're content to let this clock run out and go to the fourth quarter. You're going to want to hang around for this. You may want to call some friends and tell them, tune in. And we got a great finish in store for us. It's the 7A state championship game. Bryant leads 20 to 14. You're watching the state football championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service. Real people. I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. Thanks to PBS Passport, you can watch all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today. Arkansas PBS Passport now includes the best of Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Mansfield Park, and Sanditon. These and more Masterpiece favorites and other PBS programs are waiting for you. Donate $60 or more or $5 or more per month and enjoy over 1,000 hours of program. Well, the officials made their first big mistake of the day. <laughs> they weren't looking at our guy on the sideline, and we uh, we were still in a commercial break, and the officials let him go ahead and play, even though we had our uh, our official on the uh, sideline out in the middle of the field saying, hold up, hold up, we're not back from commercial break. What you missed was a Kareem Cotton run. He ran the ball for a first down. So North Little Rock has it first and 10 at the 38 after one play in the fourth quarter. They only have eight scheduled commercial timeouts anyway. They can wait for one. Yeah. Uh, it's an exciting time right now. They, they weren't paying attention. O'Donnell with the carry. O'Donnell gets loose. O'Donnell to the 20. Brought down at the 15-yard line. 23-yard gain for Fred O'Donnell. Nice job to break the initial contact at the line of scrimmage as O'Donnell's a little slow to get up, but runs through an arm tackle there, and he's off to the races. And once he gets ahead of momentum, he's going to be tough to slow down. And he's going to have to come off for a little bit, though. Ooh. He was trying to walk it off, but there's something with this lower leg. 128 now for, on 16 carries for Fred O'Donnell. Trainers trying to get him off the field so they can go and take a look. Obvious pain for Fred O'Donnell. Been so huge for these Charging Wildcats. First and 10, ball on the 16-yard line. The sophomore Torrance Moore comes in to replace O'Donnell. Cotton keeps it, pressure, gets away from it. Cotton down to the seven yard line. What a run by Kareem Cotton. Thought he was gonna be brought down for a loss. A great show of athleticism. It looked like he was gonna lose his footing in the backfield, able to stay on his feet, pick up some big yardage and a good sign for North Little Rock O'Donnell's back on the field. Breaks one tackle there. 
Breaks another tackle before finally brought down inside the 10. Cotton to Moore, nothing. Take that back. That wasn't 11 who ran on. That was 41, Chris Ganaway, another sophomore. Bring up second and about one. They need to get to just outside the six for a first down. They're going to give it to him. They're going to say he got it. The so spot the, fooled me, Bobby. Yeah, thought he was short. I'm with you. Now the question is, do you have faith in your sophomore to hand him the football down here, or do you rely on your quarterback, Kareem Cotton? Moore is, does have plenty of carries this year, 32 for 158 and three touchdowns. So he's seen some playing time. Ten and a half minutes to go in the state championship game. Moore's got it. Bryant's defense has him. Moore driven back, no gain on the play. Second and goal. They're going to mark it just outside the six. Yeah, you know that Bryant's going to key in on the running back. Now I see O'Donnell back in the game. That's where you heard the student section go wild. They know how important he is, and Big 11 just came back into the game. Cotton's going to keep him run behind Big 11. O'Donnell, he powers his way for two yards. They're going to mark him at the five. Right. You just use your running back as a lead blocker there, and Bryant does a nice job of shut it down, but pay attention here as Big 99's got to come off the field because his helmet came off. He's the nose tackle. So if you're North Little Rock, maybe you find out who replaced him and you run right at him. Third and goal. Ball is on the five. Fans on both sides to their feet. Cotton looking to pass. It's deflected. It's knocked down. Huge play from the Hornets. A great job and awareness by Hart Penfield, the linebacker. 44 is able to stay with his read. Saw Cotton come out of the play action with it and jumped up, got his hands on the football, and going to force a field goal attempt. North Little Rock was trying to slip someone out in the flat. Quick pass into the corner for the end zone for the touchdown. And it's knocked down. Liam's in. He's 11 of 14 on the year for his field goals. Good snap. There's the kick. It's good. It's a three point game. 12. Bryant leads it 20 to 17 after the field goal. It's a nice job to get points there, keep the momentum going. Of course, it all swung their direction because of the, the punts that either touched him or didn't touch him. And now we got a three point contest with under 10 minutes to go. Stick around. You're watching the state football championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Hi, I'm Susie Everett, wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. With our busy lives today, we often forget the greatest gift of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I hope all of us will take the time and share the love of Christ this season. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. North Little Rock drives down but has to settle for a field goal after a big play from the Hornets defense. Big time pass deflection right there. Yeah, it was a nice play. This was a heads up play. You know you're not going to get home and get to the quarterback Cotton. So Hart Penfield got his hands up, knocked it down. But that, that extra point still looms large as Bryant missed one early in this contest. And that's why it's a, still a three-point game. Shorter kick this time. Bryant fields it at about the 11-yard line. They get across the 20 to the 25. Let's go down the sidelines and check in with 
with Hayden. You know, Wes, you alluded to this ball game earlier. Bryant playing Trinity Christian earlier in the season. It's really the only time they've been severely tested in the fourth quarter. A lot of nervous Hornet fans around here, but the student section trying to get these guys going. 2017 ball game right now. Bryant trying to move the rock. Who would have thought maybe an hour, hour and a half ago, we'd be in a 2017 ball game? Not me. I, I've got my hand raised. I, I didn't think this was happening. It seemed like all the momentum was on Bryant's sideline. We'd seen it a game after game after game with the Hornets just pulling away, blowing teams out. But North Little Rock made some big plays, got some big stops, and they made this a ball game. Bryant goes to the running game on first down. Nice carry, picks up four yards. So they're ahead of the sticks on this play, second and six. Yeah, Anderson on the carry there, and my man, big 70, Braxton Johnson, the first guy to hit him there at the interior of that defensive line. Bryant's going to spread them out this time. Anderson goes up high to the right. He's in the slot, so we've got five receivers. Nobody in the backfield with Ledbetter. North Little Rock rushes three. Ledbetter's got time, but he scrambles out to his right. He's going to keep it. Ledbetter picks up a first down. Ledbetter up to the 38-yard line. First down, Bryant. That's going to put him up close to 100 yards for Anderson. You don't think of the quarterback being much of a threat to run the football. Just 252 yards in 12 games. But now, before that carry, he had 88 yards. Such a smart play. He just rolls out right and sees that North Little Rock has everyone covered. Just tucks it and runs and picks up the first down. Anderson with the carry. He's going to be a face mask. Anderson's head snapped back quickly there. Did you know, fans, you can see the live stats before we do? All you have to do is download the Arkansas PBS Engage app to get all the numbers while the game is in action. Yeah, Anderson's head whipped back on that. Here's the call. Personal foul. Grasping the face mask against North Little Rock. It's a 15 yard penalty for the end of the run. First down. Really big penalty there because North Little Rock did a good job of preventing anything from happening on that play. So it was going to bring up second and 10, but 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Ball's now inside North Little Rock territory. It's on the 46 yard line. It's been a really clean game before that, just seven total penalties, but now it's going to be five penalties for 55 yards, three of which were personal fouls on the charging Wildcats. Empty backfield, quick pass. Big time broken tackle from Tanner Anderson. He was hit on his own 49-yard line, broke that tackle, and picks up another 11 yards from that play. They were going to lose about five yards on that play if the tackle is made. But Tanner Anderson would not go down, and he actually picks up six on the play. That's great recognition by the defense, but the old adage, you got to see what you hit. And duck the head, didn't wrap up around the legs, and Anderson able to run through that one. Now it's second and manageable. Hand off to Anderson, going over the right side. A lot of blockers there, and he picks up the first down. Ball will be marked at the 35. This is a big drive for Bryant. You think of them as more of a quick strike, you know, offense with explosive plays, but if they can chew up a little time, put the ball in the end zone, it's going to make it tough on North Little Rock to have enough time on the clock to get back in it. Well, and, and you're seeing that with Buck. They're doing some things to keep the, you know, the clock ticking. You go down and take some time, score a touchdown, and it's a two-possession game, and North Little Rock may not have enough time to, to score. Anderson with it. Anderson spinning, still spinning. <laughs> Spins again, gets the ball to the 34-yard line, pick up a six and a half. And yeah, we're seeing Anderson start to get stronger and stronger as this game goes on. Should be about 99 yards for Tanner Anderson. Second and four, the ball's on the 29. Great run from Anderson. He's going to get another opportunity. Anderson is close to a first down. Pyle pushes forward. It's going to depend on the spot, but he's very close. They're going to stop the clock, and they may look at it. They're moving the chains. Give him a first down. Ball spotted right at the 25-yard line. Anderson now over 100 yards on the game. Look at that clock ticking. Bryant up by three with the ball, 25 yards away from the end zone. 
Expect to see more of Anderson. Just run the football. We're having success with it. Those guys up front doing a nice job. And go with what brought you. Anderson over the right side. Plenty of run to room. Anderson to the 10. Five. Touchdown, Tanner Anderson. Anderson's going to get the highlights of that one, Wes. But once we watch the replay, look at number 81, the wide receiver, Robert Hendricks. He takes the defensive back and put him in the end zone. Great blocking. Anderson goes untouched. And that was the big after score that we've been waiting for Bryant for about a quarter and a half. Great job from the offensive line, from the wide receiver, as you mentioned. I don't think Anderson was touched. I think that was maybe the easiest touchdown in his career. Extra point attempt. It's up. And this one is good. So Bryant expands their lead to 10. 27-17 with six minutes, 23 seconds to go in the game. Yeah, look at the left side of your screen here. You're going to send the receiver 81 there. Just put his defender all the way back in the end zone. And that's what makes a running game successful, getting 10 guys to believe in the one who's toting the rock. And it worked out well on Bryant's lead back to double digits. Anderson jogged in the last 10 yards. <laughs> Let's go down to the sideline, check in with Hayden. Wes, that loud collective sound you just heard from the Bryant sidelines was a huge sigh of relief. I don't think these guys really thought they may be tested about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, but man, what a drive put together by Bryant, as you mentioned it. Bobby, you said it. Give it to the guy that brought you here, Tanner Anderson, capping it off that drive. Nobody more fired off running off the sidelines. He just gave one of the biggest hugs you could ever imagine after that ball game. Unbelievable touchdown right there from Anderson. Bryant back up 10. It does remind me of the Trinity Christian game where Bryant lost the lead. Trinity Christian actually took the lead, and then Bryant had to come back. So that's something they could learn from, and that's an experience that they could rely on in the state championship game. That's why a team like Bryant goes out and schedules a nationally ranked Trinity Christian team to get you ready for moments like that. Line drive kick fielded by North Little Rock at the 18-yard line. Plenty of room to run. Makes a move to the sideline, to the 40. Push out of bounds at the 36-35 yard line. Big special teams play for the Charger Wildcats. Touchdown saving tackle by the kicker. Malachi Graham had the interception earlier in this game, but what a big play for North Little Rock special teams as they make the play here. It's an odd kick. It's kind of a spiraling kick instead of end over end. But they field it nicely and Randall, uh, Randall Adams does the work. Got to give Jalen Glosson some love. He had a huge block on that play that opened up the hole and allowed his return man to get the ball to the 35. So that's exactly what North Little Rock needed. You know, this is a, hasn't been today, I should say, a, an explosive team. They've, it's been grinded out, grinded out. They're down 10 with six minutes to go. They needed a big play. They just got it on special teams. It's a handoff to O'Donnell. Nothing there. Bryant's defense stacked that play up. Yeah, North Little Rock's offense probably doesn't have more than two or three plays for 10 or 15 yards or longer today. But so the special teams unit comes up with a big one. You can join the conversation with us on social media. Just use the hashtag ARPBS Sports. Yeah, so far today, the biggest play has come from Fred O'Donnell, the 19-yard run. Chris Jefferson did have a 17-yard catch. Cotton with it. He's looking to pass. He's under pressure. Cotton's brought down. Sacked by the Hornets at the 42. They picked their spots, Wes. Bryant hasn't brought a lot of pressure, but the two times they have brought, it's gotten home as Kareem Cotton on the play action pass. A well-timed blitz there. A couple guys in the backfield. And big 51 for Bryant. Able to wrap it up. And that's Garrett Bell, the defensive end, who also made the big play on the screen pass, if you remember, in that first half. And big momentum has switched sides. This is the Bryant Hornets fans you can hear below us. Yelling defense. They sense it. Third and 16 for North Little Rock. Cotton under pressure again and again. He's brought down. The Hornets defense responds with back-to-back -back sacks. Jason Shiflett, the junior Gets home in a big play. Cotton was able to spin out of one play for one defender, but Shifflett able to get in there and wrap him up. And North Little Rock likely going to have to be forced to punt here as they're faced a fourth and a mile. And the Bryant squad is fired up. Two huge plays for Bryant. 
just when you think North Little Rock, after the big kickoff return, was in business, Bryant's defense has responded with two sacks. And I think they've done a really good job, Bobby. It wasn't just one guy. It was the whole team, and they had him surrounded. Cotton is such an explosive player that if you give him a lane, you put a little pressure on him, he'll just take off and run with it and make a big play himself. But he's had nowhere to go. They've done a really nice job of keeping him contained and pre preventing that elusiveness. You mentioned the, the way that Cotton can run the football. Bryant's defense able to swallow it up real quickly and send it out to Hayden. It's fourth and 22, so North Little Rock sends out the punting group. They've got two of their timeouts left, so is that a fake punt? What are they trying to do? They blew it dead. Let's see a flag. It takes some guts to call a fake punt on fourth and 22, but I'd like it. I'm all I'm here for it. Well, and Bryant didn't send anyone back. They had all 11 of their defenders within 10 yards of it, so they were expecting something. Yep. So now it looks like North Little Rock's going to change up what they're doing. Yep. They're calling everybody over to the sideline. Wholesale changes. The play clock is running. So there's 15 seconds left on the play clock, so North Little Rock's going to have to hurry. The offense is out back there. on the field, so they're going for it now. They were going to try a fake punt. The play was blown dead, so it's fourth and 22. Here's Cotton calling for it. Back to pass. Cotton going deep. He's got Jefferson there. He's got another receiver there. Cut. What a throw by Kareem Cotton. It's a big time play down the sideline. You mentioned it, Wes. Had two receivers running wide open, and it was Ja'Cory Stewart. The junior makes the play, and it's going to be a first and goal. Fourth and 22 turns into a big time play, and they're still alive. Two Charger Wildcats receivers right next to each other. Catch is made right at the 10. Two go routes right beside each other. They made the play. Donald spinning forward, power running, picks up about two. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, but he is so strong that the momentum carried him for a couple of yards. Yeah, North Little Rock's gonna have to make a change on the offensive line. I believe that's 53 who has to come out. Corliss Farmer, helmet came off, so he's gotta leave the game for one play. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. North Little Rock, second and goal. Ball on the eight. Got to get some kind of points here. They want a touchdown. Here comes the fly sweep. Jefferson with it. He is stopped at the six. I don't think that was Jefferson that time. That was, in the, that was an eight instead of a number three. That was Felix Wade. Funny story about Felix. He's listed on Max Prep as Flex Wade. So he went about half the season with all the announcers calling him Flex Wade. Turns out they had missed a letter in his name when entering the roster on Max Preps. Seen a lot worse typos. Felix Wade. <laughs> He's flexed his muscles a couple times this year. Here's Cotton rolling to his left, looking for a receiver. Back across the middle, lofts it up. Tipped by the Hornets, incomplete. Fourth down. That's a great job by the middle linebacker, just dropping back in coverage. And I believe that's 40 again. He's made a couple big plays today. Kobe Melton got a hand on that football. And it's fourth down, you're down 10. Might have to settle for the field goal here if you're North Little Rock, but it looks like they're gonna keep their offense on the field. Well, they have a good field goal kicker. He's already made one, but they are going to go for it. Fourth and seven, four minutes to go. Play clock inside 14 seconds. Cotton's going to pass under pressure, rolls to his right, dumps it off, incomplete. Hornets do the job defensively, they'll take over. So the big stop by the Bryan defense. Well, that, that one's going to be questioned a little bit. Not the play call, but just the fact that you don't kick the field goal and cut it to one possession. Cotton was rolling out, had a man open in the flat, probably wasn't going to get to the go, to the pylon. Nice job by Bryant's defense. Comes up with a big, big play when they needed it the most. He was looking for his big back, O'Donnell, but I'm with you. Even if O'Donnell brings it in, I think he's going to be tackled. He was running towards the sideline. I don't think it, it would have been very dif difficult for him to turn it upfield. So now North Little Rock needs a turnover or a quick three and out. You know you're about to see a heavy dose of Bracey here. 
Bryant wants to run out this clock with a couple of first downs. Bracey takes it, cuts it up the middle, powers across the 10, mark him down at the 11. This is where if you're North Little Rock, first guy has to stand him up, and the rest of your teammates got to come in trying to get the football out. We saw a lot of Tanner Anderson on the previous drive. Now they bring in Jamari and Bracey, another big back. Not a bad combo to have, right? Great one-two punch, and they've got a third in Xavier Foote that's picked up over 500 yards this year and eight touchdowns. They've got three big backs, good backs. It's Jamari and Bracey in there right now on second and six. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go in the game. It's Bracey over the right side. Strings it outside. He's got first down and more. Bracey out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Move those chains for the Hornets. What's scary about these two running backs, we've talked about how big they are, how physical they are, but when they get in the open space, they've got some speed as well. And that's why Brian, between these two guys, have 1,700 yards, 27 touchdowns, and they're three minutes away from capping off a championship season. Big run there for Brian. They move the chains, get out literally from the shadows of the goalpost. They're now on the 25. Another handoff to Bracey, patient. Not much there this time, he'll fall forward for two. And North Little Rock's gonna take their second time out right at the three minute mark. Um, I'm at my man in the middle, I've got a man crush, I'll admit it, Braxton Johnson with the stop. Not above that, Wes. He's a big man, and he's made a lot of big plays. Hey, hey, don't forget, immediately following the game, you can stay tuned for Urban Forge, Ozark Artistry. This original Arkansas PBS film showcases the creativity, skill, and tradition of blacksmith artisans in Mountain View, Arkansas. So send it down to the field, and Sir Hayden. Well, sir, Bobby, thank you very much. You know, all season long, we've talked about Austin Ledbetter. We've talked about Hayden Schrader. But, you know, when you talk about this Bryant offense, they have been able to run the ball so effectively, and that's what they've been able to do in the second half. We've seen Bracey on this drive right here. Tanner Anderson able to punch that touchdown in to give them the 10-point lead. And I know Ledbetter's going to get a lot of praise when he gets to Fayetteville next year on the diamond. Hayden Schrader, how he doesn't have more offers, I have absolutely no idea. But when they needed it the most, the Bryant running game has stepped up, and they're trying to ice this thing to a third straight consecutive seven. Take time. And I gotta say the offensive line. I mean, they, they have had some huge blocks, some huge holes. They've done a great job. You know how much Buck James values the offensive line. We're seeing it pay off right here. Love that play call. How about that? Quick RPO. Corey Nichols wide open in the slot. Move the chains. A big, big first down. But we do have a flag on the far side of the field. Came in from that North Little Rock sideline. So you know those North Little Rock coaches were yelling, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, they've never missed a penalty. Maybe an illegal formation. They're marching it back. An eligible downfield on a forward pass on Bright. It's a five yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll replay second down. Surprised we don't see that more, Wes, to be honest. On these RPOs, those linemen are taught, taught to go with those linebackers, go with the defensive end, just get a little too excited, get downfield, and Ledbetter with a, the good call there, but you can see the big left tackle, 54, just too far downfield when Ledbetter lets it go. And a nice job by the officiating crew to spot it. I love the play call because they've been running the ball, running the ball, pounding it, pounding it. North Little Rock's kind of creeping forward. And you fake the run and throw it out into the uh, flat. It was an easy pass. It's going to be a high completion percentage yeah. to keep that clock going. But uh, as you said, and you pointed out, that lineman a little too far down the field. I do want to apologize. I said a good job by the officials. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Second and 13. Ledbetter looking to pass across the middle. Has his receiver. It is caught right at the first down marker. They're going to give it to him. First down, Bryant. Nice job of being patient by Ledbetter. Of course, I got a joke with every official ever. But this is a receiver just trying to find that hole in the defense. And Blake Everett finds a little, little seam in that defense and gives him a first down. Ball is moved and marked at the 36-yard line. Clock is ticking. Two minutes, 30 seconds to go in the game. Bryant up by 10, trying to run out this clock and win their third straight state championship game. Talk about a big play. Everett only had six catches all season. Makes a big one there. Here's a handoff. Nothing there. North Little Rock does a good job. 
falls for it, picks up maybe two. Timeout, North Little Rock. That's going to be their final clock stoppage as the Hogs have fallen behind. If you guys are watching our game, we appreciate it, but they have fallen behind at Mizzou. A lot more points than they scored in this one. 27-17. Bryant's pointing up at the scoreboard. <laughs> Doing a little premature celebrating. I'm trying to get their fans up, get excited. With North Little Rock being out of timeouts, one first down, we'll put this game away. So the next two, two or three snaps going to be really crucial for North Little Rock. I'm not saying go get the uh, Gatorade bucket. I'm just saying go find out where it is right yeah. now. If you've got a blue one, go after it because Coach James is wearing a white shirt. Going to make it sit, make a show. Bracey in there. He's going to line up to the right of Ledbetter. Bryant needs one first down. Probably put this game away. Ledbetter just told Bracey something. May have been, hey, go get a first down. Stay in bounds. And he said, go get a first down and more. Bracey breaking free. He doesn't want to go out of bounds. He's down at the 25 yard line, and that will do it. Buck James puts both hands up in the air. He knows that will win Bryant the state championship. At the end of this run, you see him kind of veer back into the defender, and that may be what Ledbetter told him right there, stay in bounds. Picks up an extra couple yards, but by that, Bryant's gonna be able to run out this clock, and for the first time in a long time, so with Pine Bluff in the mid-90s, the largest classification in Arkansas, a team has gone back to back to back. Congratulations to the Hornets. 93, 94, 95 is when Pine Bluff won three state championships. So it's the first time in 25 years that a school has won three straight in Arkansas's largest classification. Yeah, North Little Rock went blow for blow with this team that many considered one of the best in the last 30 or 40 years in the state of Arkansas. And Bryant's about to win game number 30 in a row, their third state championship. Those guys on the far sideline, all decked out in white, have played a heck of a football game today. Buck James just took off his headset and handed it off to one of the assistants there. There's the victory formation for Bryant. They're not going to try to score here. They're going to take it and take a knee. Tanner Anderson got to be your favorite for the MVP tonight. 18 carries, 100. Five yard penalty. Still first down. The only penalty a coach won't get mad at is when you're in the victory formation. Unless it, it costs you to run out the clock. But Tanner Anderson, 18 carries, 146, and two touchdowns. Jamarian Bracey, 14 carries, 94 yards, two more scores. The Bryant running games while they're about to be 7A state champs. Yeah, and if there was a way to split up that trophy into five pieces, I'd give it to that offensive line. They played well. So impressive. There's one knee. One more will do it. It's a big, the big, big win. The kind of, I'm not going to say a cap of dynasty because Brian's got a lot of talent on that sideline that doesn't get to play because they've got a lot on the depth chart. But it's impressive to go out and be the favorite all season long in back-to-back -back years and get it done in those two seasons. All right, guys, get your camera on Coach James. I see the Gatorade bucket. Coach James is on the 35-yard line right now. As soon as he turns his back, he's about to get a big dose. He's no stranger to it. He's got his head on a swivel. He's looking. That'll do it. Your Brian Hornets are the 7A state champions for the third straight year. They went out and earned it. Bryant's at the line of scrimmage on offense, dominated this football game. and. Wire to wire, number one. They're ranked in the top 25 in a few different national polls. Cap off a perfect 13-0 season, which is pretty special at any level in Arkansas.
This year, things have been a lot different because of COVID-19, and the celebration and the uh, post game is a little bit different too. In years past, you would see the teams line up, shake hands, talk a little bit. That doesn't happen this year in Arkansas football, so the teams just kind of give each other a wave, a salute, and a big salute to the North Little Rock Charging Wildcats. A lot of people expected a blowout in this game. 27-17 in North Little Rock had it to within a one possession game at one point. What the football? You look at the last couple of scores from these games, and, and Bryant has uh, had their way with North Little Rock, but not today. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll head down to Hayden on the field. We'll hear from Buck James, maybe from some of the stars of the game. Bryant wins it 27 17. You are watching the state football championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. I hear the train are coming, it's rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps dragging on. Now we got married in a fever, hotter than a pepper sprout. We've been talking about Jackson ever since the fire. Tonight at 9.30. I'm going to Jackson. of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation our people our culture our history our future to learn more go to visit CherokeeNation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation you'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads covering over 60 percent of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes farms and businesses the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Jump down right now. The celebration continues here at War Memorial Stadium as the Bryant Hornets win the 7A state championship game 27-17. They're handing out some of the awards to North Little Rock and the Bryant players. The Brandon Burlesworth Award. And soon they'll be handing out the state runner-up trophy and the state championship trophy. Four times in five years. State runner-up at the largest classification for North Little Rock. It's not the trophy they want to take home, but I think it needs to be acknowledged how good and how dominant this football program has been over the last half decade. Well, North Little Rock finishes the year 11 to 2, and they're only two losses to the state champions. It's a heck of a year, a great first year for J.R. Eldridge, uh, coming from uh, Arkadelphia to North Little Rock, and there are the Hornets accepting that state championship trophy. They earned it three in a row. You know. Ten years ago, maybe even five years ago, people would question if Bryant would ever be able to compete with the likes of North Little Rock, Bentonville, Fayetteville. Now everybody's measuring themselves up with the Hornets. Yes, for years it was a Northwest Arkansas affair, and we saw the programs in Northwest Arkansas dominate for over a decade. And now Central Arkansas has uh, made some adjustments, made some improvements, hire better coaches. It, it, it all starts at the top, a commitment to football, and you're seeing it pay off. And once again, it's the Bryant Hornets with their third straight state championship. And you were correct, Tanner Anderson was yep. named the game's MVP. Big game from the running back from from Bryant. It's hard to argue. 18 carries, 146 yards. Did not have a single carry today that went for negative yardage. Mm. Two touchdowns. And he's your state championship game MVP. Now they're posing for uh, team pictures. I see North Little Rock huddled up over to the side. Let's go down the field and check in with Hayden. Hey guys, down here with Coach James. He's uh, getting ready to celebrate with his team. I'm going to get him in just a second as we get ready. As Bryant wins three in a row. 
He's uh, he's a happy man right now. You got to imagine he's pretty pumped up as his Brian Hornets win uh, three in a row as they get presented the 7A state championship. I'm going to give Coach James. I know you're celebrating. Can we get you for a quick second, sir, if you don't mind? Coach, I'm going to face you this way. Three in a row for the city of Bryant. What does today mean to you? Oh, it's big. You know, I can't I can't be prouder of our kids and. Uh, you know, the way they competed. It wasn't our best game by any means, but, you know, you got to tip your hat to North Little Rock. What a competitive group of young men, and those guys played their guts out. What an improvement they had from uh, week nine to now, and, uh, you know, our kids just found a way to win, and, you know, we talked about that uh, really uh, all year long, is that there was going to be a time that we are going to have to dig down deep inside and, and pull it out and do the things it takes to be a champion, and that's what the kids did. What'd you tell your guys when they cut that lead to 20 to 14? North Little Rock's got the ball. I mean, you guys haven't been tested like that a lot this year. Well, we just, you know, we just said this is going to be a big series, you know, and then we we had two bad series right in a row, and you know, our our, our offensive coaches did a great job. Our defensive coaches did a great job. We substituted at the right time, and man, what a job to, uh, Tanner and Jamarian did. Uh, they were just uh, unbelievable. They they fought with every ounce of energy they had in their body. Wes was giving a lot of credit to that offensive line today. How proud are you of those guys who don't get enough credit? Yeah, they're unsung heroes. They are on any championship team. And, you know, those guys have done the work, workman type uh, uh, work all year long, a yeoman's work. And uh, they're, you know, they're, they're a very proud group. And uh, they're a big part of our success, no doubt. I know it's probably hard to think about legacy right now, but you're the first team in the biggest classification to win three in a row since Pine Bluff in the mid-90s. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. It is. You know, and, you know, it's hard not to, to, to soak it in right now, but this is an unbelievable uh, uh, feat to our kids, our community, our administration, and our coaches. And I think that's the, uh, you know, from a coach's standpoint, what else can you ask for? Yes, sir. Coach, thank you so much. We'll let you celebrate. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. Guys, Buck James, three-time state champion in the 7A. What another year for Bryant. They take care of business from start to finish. And honestly, guys, if I can wrap things up real quick down here and send it back to you, we didn't know if we were going to have a season this summer. And I think just the accomplishments that we got to have, we got to see football. We got to see one of the best rivalries in the state, North Little Rock and Bryant, in a great ball game to end the season. Can't ask for much more. Let's take, let's take a look at some of the stats as we wrap things up here at the 7A State Championship. The Bryant Hornets go over to the student section and celebrate with their classmates. Total yards for the Hornets, 401 yards. We talked about at the half how they were pretty even. The two turnovers were the difference. The Bryant running game was the difference in the second half. Talk about 274 yards, 22 first halves. So and North Little Rock's game plan was to come out and win the time of possession. And you see the bottom number there. Bryant actually had the football more. That last drive had a lot to do with it. But a tip of the cap to those two running backs and those big five guys up front for Bryant. They're the reason they've still got the crown. And I would have never guessed that Bryant would have been to the game with 127 yards passing. A very yeah. dynamic offense with Ledbetter and Schrader, but North Little Rock give them credit slowing down this Hornets passing game. Yeah, that's where you have to give the tip of the cap to your quarterback, Austin Ledbetter. A lot of times you may have the ego there, I've got to get my numbers. Well, today he just conceded, handed the football off, had a lot of success in the running game. Give a lot of credit to the offensive coordinator. A lot of times there's an ego there. You want to throw the football. You want to have the big explosive plays. They were content just handing the football off, getting eight, nine, ten yards, turning it up. Anderson averages eight yards a carry. Bracey averages six and a half yards a tote. Those are the type of plays that you have to make, and that's what Brian did, and that's why they're still on the field celebrating. Well, we'll be back here in less than four hours. We've got another state championship game tonight. It's the 6A state championship game, Lake Hamilton and Greenwood. These two teams played earlier this year, a conference game, a great game. It was a three-point game late. Lake Hamilton had a chance to take the lead. Greenwood gets the ball back, goes down, scores, makes it a 10-point game late, but a very good game, and we saw one good one. Let's just hope we get another one tonight. Yeah, we, we see it a lot in, in Class 7A and 6A, rematches of the regular season, the best two teams coming from one conference. You mentioned how good the Wolves and Bulldogs game was the first time they played. Greenwood undefeated. Rick Jones not there anymore. Chris Young, the offensive coordinator, had been there for nine state championship teams, got a chance to win his first as the head coach. Bobby, I'm ready. Let's do it. Well, I need a little break. I think the fans need a little break, too. Oh, roll it out there. Let's go. If you want us to get Brian out of the way, let's go. <laughs> All right, we'll be back here at 6.30 tonight, kickoff at 6.40. Thank you for watching the 7A state championship game. We'll see you tonight at 6.30 for this 6A game.